Hold my tears and trade my ears for a glimpse at kingdom come. On the other side of misery, there's a world we long to see. The strife we share will take us there to relief and sovereignty. Oh my God, we'll have our home again. By God, we'll have our home. By blood or sweat, we'll get there yet. By God, we'll have our home. In our own towns, we're foreigners now. Our names are spat and cursed. The headline smack of another attack Not the last and not the worst Oh, my fathers, they look down on me I wonder what they feel To see their noble sons driven down Beneath a coward's heel Oh, my God, we'll have our home again By God, we'll They strain to see I struggle forth to find a friend To light the way for me Oh, brothers, can you hear my voice Or am I all alone? If there's no fire to guide my way Then I will start my own Oh, my God, will Going free lesson of the day is twofold. Know your enemy, not your enemies, and the elect, the vague, and the victimizer. And the MP of today is a host of iterations of the MP white supremacy and our powerful responses, MCs. Both lessons and MPs are extraordinarily pertinent to the grand victory we in the practice of going free, had in the real world. Me and the news two years ago, it's worth sharing and reviewing. A few attacks, we'll talk about it. So is our great victory in another article from last month. I will read and review. We all will benefit onward and upward to the recapture of our destiny. Your comments, your calls, poetry, comedy skits, and rocking music all coming up. And for you adult children who may be listening with your parents or guardians, why won't skeletons fight each other? Well, you see, kids, much like the loudmouths who call for violence and the white sympathetic spheres, they simply have no guts. <laughs> And we are going free, ladies and gentlemen. Good Sunday evening, Monday morning to all of you. Please let me know that you can hear me and that the mic is the right mic and it sounds nice and clear. And I see that Brand Danger might need a hatchet over on DLive and I will get to that over the course of the stream. We just look for those Brand Danger comments in the DLive chat uh, over the course of the stream, as I say. And if you all have any comments or questions that you have 
today, please write them into the YouTube uh, channel, the live chat, and make sure you tag me as no white guilt when you do so, so that it will turn bright and orange like a clown uh, for everything that is YouTube related. What a surprise. On D Live, uh, it is no white guilt. Tag me over there and it will light up for me there. What is it? Yellow over there? Maybe a bit more apropos, but I thank you for that. If you would like to financially gift white well being and the transformative work that we are doing here, you can do so on Entropy, which should be up and already running beautifully at a cost of 15% to you when you do so. That 15% goes to the wonderful people keeping free speech alive at Entropy. You can also ask questions and pose comments in the question widget, also known as the Tall Kevin widget here. Uh, and they do not disappear. They won't scroll away. If you delete them or I delete them, they go away. If you also would like to financially gift uh, on a different platform that will not charge you or me. You can do so at Cash App. Both links are in the URL below. Finally, you can financially gift with cryptocurrency and you will find those links over on nowhiteguilt.org and under the financial links or financial gifts link tab, whatever you want to call it, uh, you will find both my snail mail address as well as the different cryptocurrencies. Right now, Ethereum and Bitcoin are doing quite well. So a tiny bit of those does a lot of good, just so you know. Now, to save time, I'm going to reserve answering questions that require more than a sentence or so uh, to those who are financially gifting. Uh, we, we are tightening up the show, keeping at the four hour schedule uh, limit and uh, going to try to be working in more calls and more of you all. So it, this is uh, this entire process is more interactive. I don't think there's anything else there to mention. And we can jump on over to see if we have any anonymous financial gifters from last week. And that, of course, just takes a moment to pull up. And while that is pulling up, I will look over here to see if there is a Brant Danger, I do see a Brant Danger. Let's see here, set as moderator, done deal. That's how fast that can happen. It's great to see you all. It's always wonderful to go free. This is the best kind of sermon because you can take this back to your churches next week or your, uh, your Hoffs or the different names that are given for the different pagan uh, gatherings, uh, get togethers, and you can take this information right into those environments, empowering you, empowering them, making the most of the religions you practice, the spiritualities you practice. And I am, and I could not be prouder. There doesn't appear to be any anonymous gifts from over the past week. So we're gonna jump into the question or the uh, go free lesson of the day, uh, which is know your enemy, not your enemies. And there's a little twist at the end for those of you who are going free, like uh, good heroes of Western civilization, uh, those who will be in the storybooks of many years to come uh, in the future, uh, your names remembered, your deeds remembered for all time. You will know that there's a twist at the end of this. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. Know your enemy, not enemies. Again, now I want you to keep this. I want you to keep this lesson in mind because we are going to be coming back to this and specifically talking about it as it is, relates to the news of the gr and more great victories in service to white well-being, using the lexicon and dialectics in service to white well-being. And it just does not end. It just simply does not end the successes. People want something to happen like this. They want to put it in their microwave and then suddenly it's done. They want to have, well, I just want to have, uh, what is it? What is it most of these people want? What do they want? 1900 United States, uh, 1940s, uh, England, 1920s, Australia. What is it they want? They want to just take the current country, put it in the microwave, hit for a minute, stand there and wait and look at it and hope that none of the microwaves make their way out of uh, the, mic the, the microwave and melt the chocolate in their pockets. Those of you who are heavy readers will know what I'm talking about. And then pop, it comes out and there you have it. You're back at some old, well, we don't want to go back. We want to go forward. Our countries, the West, have been defeated by anti-whites. We know that because we're mature adults, and therefore we are focused. And I want you to pay attention to this. It's very important. It's a very powerful element of human psychology that's used against us. As the adults in the room, we recognize that our countries have been defeated by anti-whites, and we are dedicated to recapturing our destiny beginning on the personal level, right? 
Let me hear an amen for that or a hoorah, whatever you come from, whatever the branch of the military. That's what we are focused on doing because we are knowledgeable, mature, sociopolitically mature adults in the room that are indeed set upon becoming the legends in the stories that will yet that are yet to be written and that will be uh, read to our children in their beds, our great grandchildren and great great grandchildren in the future. Well, what is Jason talking about right now in the third person. What he's talking about right now is that if you are in the state of mind that you are on the verge of losing your country, if you are on the verge of losing, you always perform less than your best. You always perform less than your best because you are afraid of failure. Your focus is on failure. Your focus is on things going wrong. For those of you who out there who have participated in sports or in any sort of competitive environment, so it could be spelling bees, you will know, you will be able to draw upon your history and please do share with others in the live chats over the many platforms that we are streaming to right now. Please do share your experiences. Did you get into the boxing ring and then were you afraid of losing? And did you not have the crap beat out of you? Did you head to that spelling bee and afraid of getting the words wrong? And did you not end up getting them wrong? When you put your focus on failure and the fear of failure, you fail. This is most uh, present, mo most obvious in team sports. When you have a team that is supposed to win and they have to win to maybe move on to the next level and they are so much better than the team that they are competing against and they head out onto the field and then they lose colossally. Well, how does that happen? Why does that happen so often? Why does the underdog win so often in these competitions? Well, the underdog wins so often because those who are have everything going for them and who should win are afraid of losing. That's why they end up, the underdog ends up winning. If you are of the mindset, and I want you to focus on this, folks, if you are of the mindset that we are about to lose our country, you are going to lose more than that. The countries are gone, and you will lose a lot more than that. You're gonna lose, you'll lose where the countries come from, which is the bio spirit of Western kind. This is the only place they emanate from. And if you are focused on losing those countries, which are already long gone, you're going to end up losing this that creates those countries. This I can guarantee you. And those who have competed in any way or, or fashion, they can speak to this. They can also speak to the other end of the spectrum where you were the underdog. Your team was the underdog. You were the underdog fighter. You were the underdog uh, person at the spelling bee competitor. And you went in there wanting what? Wanting nothing but to win wanting nothing but to succeed, wanting nothing but victory and glory. And by God, you had it. By God, you had your home again because that's where your passion was. That's where your energy was. That's where your drive was. That is how we recapture our destiny. Make no mistake, the anti-whites use human psychology against us and they keep you believing that you are on the verge of losing your country and they will keep you there all the way until the very end when you lose the fount from which the country comes. Know your enemy, not your enemies. We as white men and women do not have enemies. We do not have enemies, plural. We have one enemy, one. What group of people are our enemy? anti-whites. Do not divide those who make themselves our enemy into enemies. Do not call them by the names of their taking. Marxists, cultural Marxists, economic Marxists, liberals, globalists, progressives, feminists, first wave, second wave, third wave, Chicano nationalists, black nationalists, neocons, social justice warriors. How about racist liberals? I mean, you just really want to say, do you remember uh, back in the day, the children used to say this uh, D-U-H. Uh, we're not going to say it because the ear is against the door. The ear is against the door. But you just want to say that word. You just want to act like somebody who is heavily inebriated. You want to put on like the, the, you know, tilt your hat the wrong way and and act like you're heavily inebriated. That's why you would say something as dumb as racist liberal uh, or the woke brigade or even wokeism. You know what? I think people talk about things like wokeism after they have received a heavy blow to the head. 
that's the only time that something like that comes out of their mouths. You do not call them by the names of their taking. They all become simply anti-whites whenever they cause, seek, or support the harm of Western kind. We name those individuals. They do not name themselves. By giving them the names of their taking, you empower them and disempower us. By identifying them with the name of their taking, you take us out of the center of our story. By focusing on anti-white groups individually, you put the emphasis in the wrong place. Let me stop there for a moment, take a look at the clock. I see we're 16 minutes into this magnificent gathering, and I'm going to keep an eye on the time, as I have been doing now that I have a giant clock. I have a giant clock. <laughs> and... Um, uh, at least that's that's what I've been told when I show people the clock. Um, anyhow, so I'm going to keep an eye on the clock, but I do want to mention here of the importance of being in our story and the important it versus being in someone else's story. When you are, and we talk about this regularly, and we can will continue because of its importance. But for those who are new, we welcome you. You want to remain a wallflower? That's great. They're beautiful. Uh, you can uh, also jump right into these different live chats and communicate. That's going to be the best way if you have questions to learn is to ask some of the people in the live chat. You can direct your questions, of course, to the moderators. But there are many people going free in these live chats, and they've been going free, uh, some of them for a couple years, and they've progressed uh, quite beautifully. And uh, you'll be able to get some answers from them. And anything that is still a mystery to you, of course, I will speak to, and they will bring to my attention. But we need to be in the center of our story. We do not live in the center of our story when we begin this, this heroic journey of uh, uh, sympathy to our kind, our people, our weakest members. We don't begin in the center of our story because we begin in what we believe is the real world. But we know, as uh, recently talking about it, that this is the anti-white narrative. The anti-white narrative takes pieces of reality. It, it lies. It, it fabricates out of whole cloth and tells you that's reality. It'll take pieces of reality, change them to bolster and prove the anti-white narrative. And it will conceal things that contradict the anti-white narrative. This is why you always fail when you use data from the real world against anti-white religious fanatics. The, relig the religion they practice is anti-whiteism. Data doesn't work against them. And more importantly, the anti-white narrative, the real world, the vast majority of what you believe the real world to be is actually the fiction that your subconscious mind can't tell the difference whether it's fiction or reality. And we talk about that at length, about how it is that your subconscious mind and the proofs that your subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between reality and fiction, and that your subconscious mind is the part of your mind that lives the vast majority of your life for you. And so you have to understand that we begin in a place that is not our story. It is their story. It's an anti-white narrative. It is very ugly for us. When we talk about going free, we're talking about several different levels of going free. You're going free of the, the anti-white uh, meme pathogens, and I'm redundant there. That's what meme pathogens are. They're anti-white that are inside of you. They're in your subconscious mind. You're going free of that narrative, that anti-white narrative, getting into our story where we will depend, where you are the hero, where you are the good guy, where the truth for our people reigns supreme and where the end of that story, when you flip through the pages, those beautiful children of ours uh, end up ruling over very peaceful swaths of their homelands and uh, whatever it might be, whatever their homelands are, and uh, they grow and strength and beauty and intelligence and health beyond our wildest reckoning. And it's a wonderful, glorious end to that story, which really, even though an end for us, a beginning of a new story for them, something truly beautiful. The anti-white narrative doesn't end that way for us. The pages are soaked with our blood and tears. That is how it has uh, worked your entire life. Every chapter has ended that way and every chapter will continue to end that way all the way until the very end of that story. So we get out of that story. And when we do that, what does it mean to get out of the story? It means we focus on us. We stop focusing on what the anti-whites are or what they think, 
or where they came from or what their ideas exactly are, who articulated their ideas specifically or who specifically funded their ideas in the beginning and what names do they call us? And then therefore we will take upon ourselves the names that they give to us and we will then gladly use the names they give to themselves. That is the ultimate sign of obsequiousness, of just this disgusting, servile, pure ignorance of being trapped in a cage and the cage there so long, you cannot tell that the bars are in front of your face any longer. They have always just been part of your milieu. And so you therefore do not even see them anymore, but we see them and we give out our hands to those. We hold our hands out to those who would like to step out of the, out of that cage, off of those pages into our story where we focus on us. And all that matters in our story is whether or not somebody out in the world is either going to be either neutral toward us, fine, go live your lives. That's a wonderful thing. Or they're going to serve white well-being with us. This is the most noble and glorious of, of causes of all ages. And we gladly welcome you. Whatever your immutable characteristics are, please join us. It's a very heroic thing to do in this age. Or those individuals decide to be anti-white. And when they decide to be anti-white, we merely recognize that decision. That is the difference. So it was important to pause there and see now that we are at 522 Eastern Standard Time, United States of America, once great state of Virginia, right outside Washington, D.C. For those who are around the world and wondering, well, where exactly is this guy in the white shirt holding the book up, covering up half the camera? He is a stone's throw from a house where a senile man lives, a big white house where a very senile person lives on the uh, Potomac River. And we'll continue. By focusing on anti-white groups individually, you put the emphasis in the wrong place, depriving us of the perspectives that stimulate ideas to protect ourselves from all anti-whites, both big and small. Love for our people unites us, not anger for another group of people. Love for our people unite us, not anger, not hatred, or a desire to harm other groups of people. That will never unite you. That will never unite our people. We have to create a people out of a deracinated race. We don't have a people. So this idea that you're going to have one group uh, aligned with another group and that one of those groups is going to be our group and align with another group against some somebody else is preposterous. And for everyone who thinks that those who articulate such ideas are so, so smart, all that I can say is that smart, that sort of smart is what smart looks like to stupid people. So remember that there are no stupid questions, only stupid people. And uh, what you can do about it, I don't know. But you don't need to know how everything in the world works to be able to make use of it. I get in the, uh, I, I would get into a spaceship if they would allow me to, and I wouldn't know how any of it worked, and I would gladly use it uh, to travel out of the atmosphere. It would be a hell of a lot of fun to pilot something like that. I know how an automobile works, but do all of you? So you use things all the time that you don't know how exactly it works. What about this? Do you eat well? Do you know exactly how the, the food is processed in your body and becomes energy and becomes the different proteins and becomes the different cells. Of course you don't, and yet you continue to eat. By dividing them into many categories, by dividing those who at this point, the little twist is coming, at this point we're referring to as an enemy, by dividing them into many categories, you create the illusion that we are outnumbered. You cause fear. You stimulate doubt and second guessing. And thereby, you deprive yourself and us of the righteous indignation we need to defend ourselves. You can rewind and listen to that later. By dividing them, it's so very important. You cannot overlook that. By dividing them, again, the enemy, into many categories, you miss the thread that binds them all. The only thread that matters for our and therefore your well-being. That they are anti-white. That's all that matters. That is all that matters. I don't care whether one worships of this and the other worships of that and the other things. Got ideas from this crazy 
anti-white and then the other group gets ideas from this crazy anti-white. You don't multiply the people who are victimizing you. You don't multiply them for the reasons I just gave here. Again, you don't have to understand how it works. It just works like your car, like eating properly. Even with incompatible ideologies, anti-whites, well, let me take a step back. Distinct anti-white groups always overlook their mutually exclusive doctrines in order to act in concert against us. Do they not? Of course they do. You see that all the time. It doesn't matter how contradictory their ideologies are. They act in concert. They overlook all of those contradictions to act in concert in an anti-white way. So discussing these things, uh, uh, their, their contradictions, wondering why, how do they get along, all of that is irrelevant. All of that is a waste of your time. You shouldn't be pondering any of that. You should be going to your friends, family, and strangers and spreading the practice of go free. The lexicon you begin with, the dialectics you begin with, and then if they take that up, they're glad to use those. You say, I know, I will tell you where this came from. And then you too can go free and be empowered. Even with incompatible ideologies, anti-whites are able to unite because they have a common victim, Westman, that they underhandedly name oppressor. Having an oppressor gives them the right of self-defense, which creates the illusion that they are united as they inflict harm on us and our civilization. Again, if you have to rewind once we're done here, we're only here for four hours these days, then mark the time down, go back, have another listen, ponder it. If you have questions next time about it, reach out during the, during the next going free or reach out during the next tap maybe, or reach out uh, if I do a roll in going free where the language is a bit more colorful. And I will mention right now for those of you who weren't aware of the fact that we rock out prior to these wonderful streams on Sunday, or at least we have the previous few. So for about 30 minutes or so, uh, we go live uh, just about everywhere, just about everywhere. And we play some of your favorite rock and roll tunes while I am getting ready. And you might see me air guitaring or something very silly because I can't help myself. I might even be air drumming or whatever it is because I can't help myself. I get into the music and it's a heck of a lot of fun and you can have fun too. You can show up and you can chat and uh, listen to the good tunes before we get started here, just like church. It's just like Hoff. You're rocking out to the tunes before things get started. You get to chat some, and then we get rolling uh, into the day's lessons. It is also important here to note, I want to mention before I move on, that this gaining the right of self-defense by way of their anti-white narrative is always going to give them two things, a absolute fanatical zeal. They will travel hundreds of miles. They will uh, they will scream like banshees right from the pit of Hades. They will just come at you. And it also gives them the excuse, the legitimization, the right, whatever they want to call it, to do things to you that are unethical, immoral, illegal, against the rules, against the uh, terms of service or whatever it might be. Because they have, according to their narrative, they have gained the right to self-defense. If you are in their narrative having this conversation, you can't overcome that, my friends. You can never overcome that. Please stop trying. I have so many reach out to me and say, but I can share this and I can share that. I've been doing this for over two decades. I've heard all that you can share. I've seen every other tactic used and it fails. Where they have a story where they have the right to self-defense as a consequence of their story, you cannot defeat them in that tale. You have to leave their story to be able to defeat them in those conversations, those arguments. 
when you must identify a specific group of anti-whites for clarity reasons, return to referring to them as anti-whites as soon as possible. And when I say when you must, I'm talking about the rarest of times. Maybe you're giving a police report and you have to tell uh, the police officer the races uh, and uh, exactly what they looked like of the individuals perhaps who attacked you, the anti-whites who attacked you. Otherwise, you do not get into these, these long discussions about other groups of humanity because that is immoral. That is unethical. We don't want that done to us. Your immutable characteristics are something you cannot do anything about. What we care about is whether or not a person is going to behave like an anti-white, think like an anti-white, act like an anti-white, talk like an anti-white, implement strategies that victimize us like an anti-white and therefore are anti-white. And their immutable characteristics, their race, their religion, all of that is totally immaterial at that point. And again, return to the anti-white, return to anti-white as soon as possible. Finally, despite the fact, and here comes the twist for all of you newbies and those who think that you're, you tyros out there, you neophytes, uh, for all of you out there who are just getting started, incipient practitioners of going free, uh, or those who have fancied themselves as practitioners and didn't see the twist coming because you haven't read this page or read it enough uh, to reflect upon it. Finally, despite the fact that I have been using the word enemy above, I did this for clarity. Do not use the word enemy unless you have to. Use the words victimizer and victimizers for anti-whites. Anti-whites are our victimizers. The word enemy implies some equality in the injury that individuals of groups can inflict on each other. There is no equality of injury between Western kind, specifically those serving white well-being, and anti-whites. At present, we are more like a chained captive tormented and tortured by a sadistic abductor. Anti-whites are our victimizers. Our victimizers demonize us in the media. Our victimizers prevent us from holding meetings, conferences, and the like. Our victimizers censor us from social media and payment processing platforms. Anti-whites are our victimizers use it. I cannot iterate that or, or underscore that enough, reiterate it enough, because people all the time are using this, uh, the enemy, the enemy. We can do next to nothing to them. We can't kick them off platforms. We can't tell the world that their claims are, are just uh, pretexts that they're just meretricious. This idea that everybody is going to get along and it's going to be this wonderful nirvana in the future. Well, that is just meretricious. And what's meretricious for those out there who don't know the $5 word? It just means that something looks like it's wonderful and beautiful until you get into it and you find out, no, indeed, it is pernicious. It's deleterious. It's harmful. It's sickening. It ruins. It destroys. It's like a prostitute. In fact, I think the word might even a meritrix might even be a word, an old word for a prostitute from a distance. She might look quite good. And then when you get up close to her, you find out, oh my gosh, she is working the night and she is not very good looking at all and probably quite ill and in need of medical attention. And you would not want to get within 10 feet because who knows what kind of things might just spring off of her and jump onto you just from the proximity meretricious. We can't go out to the world and tell the world that, wait, these anti-white claims about nirvana and multiracialism and all, and these, uh, the commercials and the videos and the, everything where the people are smiling and it's always, and now it's hard to even buy stock footage or, you know, for, for sale footage for videos and pictures and the like, where it's not a, a multiracial group where everybody is just smiling. It is just the grandest thing, but we don't see that anywhere 
in society on that sort of a, a scale. Yes, individuals come together to be best of friends without question. I had a lot of non-white friends growing up. One of the things they knew is that they could not uh, dig down on the white race around me uh, because I stood up for my people and we were able to get along and I didn't uh, speak badly of their race. They didn't speak badly of mine and we were able to be friends. Many of you have had relationships like that. Not a problem. The problem is when we are told by the anti-whites endlessly in these meretricious commercials and et cetera photographs that it always works out beautifully when indeed multiracialism throughout history has always worked out a very different way. But of course, CNN will have the answer to that. The ears against the door. Make sure you ask them and everybody at YouTube because I know they have the answers for you. That's what we do here, folks. We do not have the power to inflict equal injury on anti-whites. We don't have the power to take their speech away. We don't have the power to prevent them from getting paid. We don't have the power to sick the IRS on them and audit them. We don't have the power to do any of those things. So this is not an enemy scenario. This is a conquered people who is being victimized by a conqueror, and that is the anti-whites, anti-white oligarchs for those who hold positions of power, for those who have a lot of money, for those who might be behind the scenes with a lot of money, who knows? People who don't want their names to be known, some of them or most of them these days want their names to be known, so it's not a big secret. 5.37 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, ladies and gentlemen, keeping an eye on the big clock. So they are our victimizers. Always talk about them as our victimizers. It's not just a matter of being right in that sense. It is also sets up the premises by which you win discussions. Remember that. You don't have to know exactly how, pardon me, what we talk about as thought chains, exactly how they work. How you end up coming to the right answers all on your own all the time. All of a sudden, wow, what happened? Where did this magical power come from that I suddenly know what to say? Well, share that. Uh, with the folks who are in the live chat, if you've experienced that when going free. Share that before you started practicing going free, you were still who you were today. You weren't appreciably more educated. You weren't appreciably more intelligent before you started going free. And yet you, for some reason, couldn't find the right answers, couldn't find the, 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 the responses, even on the spur of the moment, of what to say to those you love and you want to help to go free, whether they're strangers or family members or those who are anti-whites and you just now shut them down. Before, you couldn't find a word to say without looking bad. Now, suddenly, you can find the words. How did that happen? Well, those are called thought chains. Again, you don't know how the car operates or the food maybe gets into your system or there's something you don't know how it operates, the computer or the phone, and yet you use it every single day. Use this go free of the mean pathogens in your system, go free of the anti-white narrative. Let's recapture our destiny together. Let me touch metal so I don't throw electric and hopefully I won't. And I'm gonna swivel around here so that I can take a quick look at uh, the document I have pulled up. This is uh, further from go free, second edition, iteration one, and we are working on iteration two. It's gonna be over a hundred pages longer, magnificent. And uh, that will be available shortly. We're jumping over to the uh, document on my computer though, because I wanna be able to jump through a couple of different places. And here we have, uh, this is, this is the segment called, let me jump back up, it leapt on me, my apologies. Anti-whitism in academia, anti-whitism in academia. And here we're talking about what are some examples that the academics, you, uh, what are some examples that anti-white academics em employ in their daily anti-white activities? How do you know them for what they are? One of the things they do is they misrepresent white positive positions, intentions, and the like. Examples of that, White well-being advocates want to abolish racial quotas in hiring, quote, so that they can return to bigoted hiring practices, close quote. So you that's the kind of thing, if you're in academia, you listen to a professor, even in high school these days, even a junior high school, they'll say they, they will misrepresent white positive positions. Why? Why would they have to misrepresent our, our actual positions? Keep this in mind because we're going to be reviewing an article a little bit later uh, in uh, the gathering today that is pertinent. So it is germane. So they misrepresent white positive positions. They have to misrepresent white positive positions because our actual positions 
are the built in a way that normal people, good people of all races will say, yes, of course, of course that's legitimate. Yes, that's fair. So the anti-whites knowing this have to misrepresent us. What do we do when the anti-whites misrepresent us this way? We smile from ear to ear because we're speaking to our brothers and sisters as quickly and as widely as we possibly can. We do not, this is what we don't do. And, and uh, many of you, maybe all of you, uh, I guess I should say all of us, because early on I did the exact same thing. I followed my elders in the white sympathetic spheres. And the, the former behavior was to get stunned, shocked, annoyed, chagrined at the hypocrisy. They're misrepresenting us and they just go on and on about how it's just a big lie and then go and tell everybody who already agrees with you about how we've been misrepresented again. And then they can bring a story to you about how we've been misrepresented again. And you go back and forth and nothing ever gets any better. I wonder why. I wonder why things wouldn't get any better when that's all you're doing. We smile really big because we know that we have them by the collar. They have them by the collar when they have to do that when they have to misrepresent us and they when especially when it goes higher up the chain when it's just the the ugly disgusting anti-white that lives on the street who misrepresents you that's eh, whatever but when it's the multi-million even even centimillion dollar organiz anti-white organizations and they misrepresent us well then you can have a big smile because you can be guaranteed they know when they sat down in that office they said, my God, we can't tell the population what they're actually saying, like we can with all of those other white sympathetic groups out there. We can, we can actually quote those people, and it looks and it's it they're playing the villain. So it's good. We can share with, but these over here, we are just gonna have to flat out lie about. We're just gonna have to flat out say the exact opposite of reality. Good smile. All of those teeth. I want to see all of them. How many do you have? Maybe you have dentures and they're all just beautiful. Never get them pure white when you get older. Never get the pure white dentures. I don't know why people do this. If you did, maybe you get a new pair. Get them so that they look like real teeth. You, know, you have some color to them like your, your age. If you get them snow white, they look like you, you have maybe the mouth of Sauron inside your head. I don't know. Where did this come from? Why, why has any dentist ever recommended this? I think there might be some sort of evil among dentistry. I'm not kidding. It's totally true. There must be some kind of a joke, joke. The dentists are not trying to take us out, but they do try to put pure white smiles into people's mouths for some reason uh, that are older than their age uh, or that the smiles are younger than their age and it just doesn't look right. Get some that look like your age, close at least, close. They misrepresent and what are some of the things they do? The first example I give here is so uh, white well-being advocates. I mean, you can see some some so-called professor standing up at the front of some room or teacher saying, well, these, these white well-being advocates, they want to abolish racial quotas in hiring so that they can return to bigoted hiring practices. Fill out outline. White well-being advocates claim to care about white well-being, quote, but what they really mean is that they want white supremacy. Now keep this white supremacy in mind. It's going to come back later in the gathering. Let me jump on down and we have a couple other spots. Here's an MP for the day. And there's several iterations of this, folks. White supremacy. And if you have questions at 545, 15 minutes left of this segment, which is always consists of the MP or MPs of the day and the going free lesson of the day for those who are new. And then we move into other segments, things like a mailbag, your comments, your questions. If you have comments or questions, during this segment and you have written them into the live stream and they've already scrolled off, make sure that when I return, you repost those or you post them over in the question widget on entropy where they will not disappear. Remember, if it is merely a, a question or, or comment, please make it in such a way that it can get uh, a one word or one sentence res response so that we can move through as many as possible. I think everybody saw last week that we had so many people financially gift with their questions that we weren't even able to get to uh, the questions uh, that, that were left over. And that's obviously the way it, it has to be. 
Uh, somebody who's going to financially gift with their question or comment is going to have their question or comment read before somebody who did not. Makes sense, right? It's fair to everybody. The MP uh, of the day is white supremacy. And then in parentheses, I have racism, hatred, anti-Semitism has to fall. How many of you all have encountered that from someone on television, someone in your life, a teacher? White supremacy has to fall. I think over this past uh, summer, We've all probably heard it in the different iterations a thousand, ten thousand times. It's everywhere you turn, from the president all the way down to the absolute mal malefactors roaming the streets with uh, flame makeshift flamethrowers and urine balloons, and who are given license by the government and who have charges dropped by the government. And look into it for yourself. Maybe what I'm saying is not true. Maybe. Uh, there wasn't an actual request that came from DC to a state government asking to drop charges, or maybe that never happened. So look into it for yourself. Maybe that people having their charges dropped when they're anti-white all the time, maybe that never happens. So just look into it for yourself. It might just be a wild rumor. Although I am a bit inclined to think that the numbers of these people, if they were being charged for the things that they were doing, the numbers in the streets would shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink, but they don't seem to be doing that. They don't seem to be going to jail like we would go to jail for the rest of our lives. The MC, when you say white supremacy, you mean white people. You are saying that white people have to fall, which proves that you are anti-white. And we are just translating what the anti-whites are actually saying. When they say white supremacy, when they use that god-awful word whiteness, which you never use when you're going free because you're not that dumb, they mean white people. When they say racism, they mean white people. When they say hatred, they mean white people. When they say anti-Semitism, they mean white people. So just always insert with whatever anti-white slur it is, just insert the truth. Translate the truth and then put them on the spot for what they mean. Well, we don't mean all white people. Right. It's only the whites that aren't violently anti-white that need to fall, right? The whites that are violently anti-white, they're okay for now with you. But what if a white person isn't anti-white? Is that a problem with you anti-white? You anti -white? And of course it is a problem. You put them on the spot. You make them look like the villain. This is how we win time and again, time and again. And uh, we'll jump down to the next MP, you. And by the way, MC is meme curative. It is the opposite of a meme pathogen. MP, you are a white supremacist, racist, anti-Semite, et cetera. The MC, of course, is only anti-whites use the language of white oppression, white erasure. Everyone of every race and background is permitted to support white well-being. Again, the MP, you are white supremacist. You are a racist. You are an anti-Semite. Now, remember, these work both ways. This is not just a conversation that you can be having with someone in your world, uh, but it also is the conversation happening in your head from your subconscious mind. It's saying to you that, wait a second, if you listen to this guy in the white shirt with that thing on his chest, which I'll talk about in a bit, people are probably wondering what this glorious thing is on my chest, and I'll share that in a bit. If you listen to him, well, then that makes you a white supremacist. If you listen to him, that makes you one of those racists. That's happening in your head right now. I know, I can hear it. I can hear what you're hearing because the same thing happens in my head. We were all victimized in the same way. We were all infected in the same way. The difference is I'm willing to admit it. Are you willing to admit it? And are you willing to then combat it? You have to turn around to that little voice in your head. And you have to say that only anti-whites use the language of white oppression and white erasure. Why was I victimized with that? Why am I hearing that in my head? Why am I remembering movies and books and TV shows et cetera, as though that was the real world? Why am I seeing all of that as though that was the real world? Why am I reading history books that have citations of other history books that have citations of other history books and nothing is first or primary sources and accepting that as fact? Why am I doing that? Why did I do that? Only anti-whites would say such things. MC, this is an MC, folks. White supremacy, hate, racism, all of these things are anti-white slurs. So we always put it in the, in the quotes. They don't exist in, in our world. They don't exist in the real world. They only exist in that anti-white narrative where Western kind is being white erased. White supremacy is a slander used on white people who are not anti-white. White supremacy is a slander 
that is used on white people who are not anti-white. Does that make sense to everyone? Very nearly. Just who made that? Was that for Noel? Where I pick up, I say, does that make sense? And I take a, <coughs> I didn't cough. He may, he added a gulp sound, um, but it was fantastic. It was hilarious. Here's the next one. And I think this might be the last one I have for you, MC. So we might have a little bit of time for any questions at eight and a half minutes before we roll forward into the next segment, which is going to be even more glorious than the first segment. And it is this, uh, when you say, now remember, this is a meme curative. So you first, you have the issue of the voice in your head, what the feelings that are welling up with inside of you, right? You have to contend with that. That's part of the process of going free, curing yourself of these meme pathogens. You then have the people outside of you, the people you're going to speak to that you're trying to help go free and the anti-whites you're going to defeat in argumentation and confrontation. And you're going to walk away for the first time in your life feeling like the hero that you are. Some of these testimonials that have come in about people saying for the first time in my life, the, the one guy I think we read, I don't know, what was it like two, three months ago now? Uh, maybe it was a little longer where he said he's, he's like 50 something or 60 something. And it was the first time and he's had thousands of arguments with anti-whites. And it was the very first time in his entire life that he walked away actually feeling, not lying to himself, but actually feeling that he was the hero that he was the good guy and the anti-white was, there. and the anti-white in fact, at this place of work is where he was having this argument, ended up uh, coming back and saying, oh no, no, please, I'm, I don't, I'm not anti-white, I'm not anti, didn't want to be seen as the villain, didn't want to be seen as the villain. And you, you level up or level down these conversations you have with those around you. So if somebody is, and I was just with Tim Murdoch last night on his show, if you missed it, make sure you check it out over there on White Rabbit Radio. And uh, we, we talked about this for a little bit, leveling up and leveling down the conversation, depending on who you're talking to and what you're trying to achieve. So you're trying to get somebody to uh, come over to go free, somebody you love, somebody you care about. Uh, and you'll say to them, when listen, when you say white supremacy, that actually means white people. Don't do you realize that it actually means white people in every case. And uh, because when you say, well, it doesn't mean white people, then you're only white people you're talking about. There are the white people who are anti white. So I really don't think that that th th that's not congruent with your character. I think you're a wonderful person. And this is a very ugly thought. So I you must you must be misstating your actual sentiments. Uh, let's try to get to the root of what you are saying. That would be how you would level down this particular MC and use it on somebody you're trying to bring over. Uh, if it's somebody otherwise, somebody who's just problematic, you level it up. You just call that uh, anti-white what they are. When you say white supremacy, you mean white people. So when you say that white supremacy has to be crushed, you are saying that white people have to be crushed, which proves that you are anti-white. I've heard out of elected people over the past year, In fact, an entire campaign, in my opinion, I know in their opinion it might be different, but in my opinion, was focused on, uh, and, and the words were used, crush white supremacy. Uh, they mean white people who are not rapidly anti-white. That's what they mean. Any white people who is not uh, who are not rapidly anti-white have to be crushed. And here's the uh, catch-all, folks. A white person can never be anti-white enough. You can never be anti-white enough. Look at Chauvin. He has a non-white wife. He, I'm told he participated in non-white charities. We've had this numerous times. Look when Obama was in office, uh, when uh, the white police officer was called to the house and uh, because there was a, a person snooping around the house, going through the bushes, trying to open windows and, and late at night, and the cops showed up and some guy walks out of the bushes and the cops said, okay, let me see your hands. Who are you? And it was actually the, the uh, non-white gentleman who owned the house, but he's, he's coming out of the bushes in the, in the dark. 
and the police have been called to the house because there's a prowler trying to open the windows. And the guy says, oh, no, I, I own this house. This is actually my house. And the police officer doesn't know that. So he's going to say, hey, you, show me your hands and let me put cuffs on you and then we'll figure this out. Any rational person would say, yeah, thank God that you came to my house. And if there was an actual prowler here, you would be getting them right now. Instead, this guy decides to have a tantrum because he's he was an anti-white and uh, the police officer was white. And guess what? It didn't matter how this white police officer had given the chair, non-white charities only, excluding whites, working with non-white children uh, in uh, these, these, these uh, what was it, big brother programs and all of these other sorts of things throughout his entire career so that he could climb that ladder and be as anti-white as possible. And still it wasn't enough. It's never enough. And you know what? Not only is it not enough for the present, but you have to be anti-white enough for all time. So if you attended, if you were part of that country club uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, where it was only 5% non-white, well, guess what? When you get uh, up for that potential job promotion as the South Africanization of the United States and the rest of the West continues afoot, they're going to bring that up. They're going to say, you know what? You were part of that country club 20 years ago, and it was only 5% non-white. Clearly, clearly a uh, heretical to anti-white institution and therefore racist, the anti-white slurs, and therefore you don't get the job or therefore you lose your job. And then this uh, anti-white person, whether white or non-white, is going to get your job. They wanted your job, and then they researched that you were part of that country club 20 years ago, and now you get to suffer for it. it and you saw that with the lead. You saw that with Trudeau. You saw that with the leaders. Uh, you saw that with the governor, the so-called governor uh, of uh, Virginia uh, down there in Richmond. It doesn't matter how anti-white you are today. You had to be as anti-white as an anti-white you have to be for all time, your whole life. And that simply is impossible. So if you're white, you can't be anti-white enough. So when they say here and when we say that what they mean that needs to be crushed when they talk about white supremacy or the white people who are not vehemently anti-white, there is only the briefest of respites in that statement because it's not even going, they're not even going to wait for tomorrow to come after the white anti-whites. The white anti-whites are next. If you're white, you're the problem. That's how anti-whiteism works, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that's the last MP. Keep it in mind uh, today when we work our way into the, the tale uh, that we have uh, of the news and great successes, just tremendous successes in service to white well-being. And uh, maybe what I'll do in the closing uh, seconds here of uh, what we are, what do we have coming up next? What did I actually want to... Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Okay. So we'll do, we'll do that. We'll see how the transition will work. But what I want to do is maybe show to you all our great glass smith. We have the best people from all white sympathetic spheres, implicit and explicit, come to the service of white well-being because the hour has come for the best people to be called and to step forward. And one of those people that has stepped forward in service to white well-being is this marvelous glass smith glass blower and he has produced i don't know if we can see here let's see if i get the there you go that my friends is vedya and it is from prometheus rising that is all of vedya invisible to the eye until you shine the light on it and then you can see creation itself our story in prometheus rising take back your destiny and that little white dot that you see looking over Vedya, that is Prometheus himself. The story of Prometheus, rewritten, ladies and gentlemen, for you all telling the story of uh, the creation of the Promethean people, our people, and uh, no other actual races of humanity are in that uh, tale. There are uh, uh, races that I created to serve as foils to teach us about ourselves, this is Prometheus rising. Forget everything you know about Prometheus or think you know. This is Prometheus Ithelia. Take back your destiny. It is completely, the story is completely rewritten. Forget everything you know and all of those interesting takes over the years and definitely forget what you think you know from any of those people who are uh, considered a villain today and who talked about these different uh, uh, gods, 
the ideas that represented them and the like from the past. Forget what you think you know, because you're just going to confuse yourself when you dig into the story of Prometheus Ithelia, Prometheus Rising, my book, Prometheus Rising, Take Back Your Destiny. That's where your story begins. That's where all of our stories begin. Our people's story begins. It's didactic throughout the totality on several tiers. And then when you get to the end in those blank pages, uh, literally and metaphorically moving forward, you pick up the pen and you'll be writing your story of heroism from that point forward. And uh, having said that, we'll be right back. Race isn't skin deep. It extends to the core of our being. Hater is a code word for white people who aren't anti-white. We have a right to inherit and a right to pass down. There is no excellence where there is equality. For every diversity higher, there is a diversity fire. It is not the similarities that make us the same. It is the differences that make us different. The truth is hate to those who hate the truth. Atonement cannot be made for a grievance never committed. Hollywood isn't history. In a world of collectivism, individualism is suicide. There is no Western civilization without Western kind. Do you remember the day you almost gave in, almost disappeared? Nearly left a wound that none of us could heal. I count my stars, it's a miracle you're here. And in spite of it all, you're not afraid to feel These are the stories I will tell my children All of the sacrifice and service to them Nothing comes easy in securing a victory, but it's worth it. These are the stories I will tell my children. Here's to the hero. May we lift them up and Carry our heads high May we act as a beacon Offer protection Bringing ugly truths to light May we be better May we be worthy of our blood And choose to fight These are the stories I will tell my children
Do you remember? The day you promised you would do all you can. Facing an evil you might not live to see it sin. Feeling the weight of the world and still here you stand. Staring into the eye of the dark with the will to destroy every power that keeps you away from your right to keep your people alive. These are the stories I will tell my children. All of the sacrifice and service to them. Nothing comes easy in securing a victory, but it will never not be worth it. These are the stories I will tell my children. These are the stories I will tell my children's children. All of the sacrifice and service to them. Nothing comes easy in securing a victory, but it will never not be worth it. These are the stories I will tell my children's children. Let's get some raucous emojis for everybody who participated in uh, reading uh, for Final Blossom and the, and Final Blossom putting all of that together. Uh, so many wonderful folks have come together to participate in uh, those projects and he's been heading that up. What a tremendous champion he is and every single one of those wonderful people are who are participating. God bless every single one of them. It is very meaningful. Uh, for all of us in service to white well-being, to have people do that, to become centers of gravity and make profound pieces like this. And Final Blossom, he is just a big salute to you, my dear friend, and uh, spotlight on you and everyone who participated, all of their names uh, he shared up there, those who are willing to share 
whether it is a uh, just a nom, nom de guerre. And of course, why do we have to use nom de guerre? Well, it's because we don't control society. We don't control Western civilization at all. The anti-whites do. And that's a total contradiction to the anti-white narrative, which is something we should talk about uh, all the time rather than ignore it and pretending that we have uh, uh, some sort of strength or power that we don't actually have. Uh, it's an argument that I've been having with folks in the white sympathetic spheres for a long time. Don't, no, never talk about that because we are, that that shows weakness or that shows that we've been, we have been defeated. Stop pretending. Let me jump on over to Entropy and take a look at uh, the financial gifts over there. And we're going to roll right into your questions and comments here uh, relative to the first segment or to anything else you all have uh, on your mind, wanted to talk about things going on. And then we are going to, and wasn't that a beautiful song by Olivia Key? What a champion she is. We have Sloss here, financially gifting $5, taking us right into the gathering. Thank you so much, dear brother. People focus on losing when they believe there's nothing more to win. Very often, yes, indeed. Thank you so very much uh, for mentioning that. Uh, thank you for that uh, $5 financial gift as well, dear brother. Promethean, promulgation, another stupendous champion. God bless him. $10 financial gift. Vagues wrongly attributing something to a non-white group, such as a genre of music, fashion, technology, etc., is an omnipresent conversation starter. What is the best MC for these scenarios? That's a great question. And we do see that all the time. Uh, you very often see this when it comes to, well, I'll just say, yeah, non-white non uh, non people are often by vagues who are, who are not anti-white. They're not trying to be anti-white. They're not trying to white erase one of our accomplishments. Uh, they, they, they've been told by anti-whites by way of the regime's media that, oh, well, no, what? These non-white people came up with that, or they believe that just because uh, non-white people are all using it broadly, using the idea, using the verbiage or whatever, must mean that they came up with it. Well, indeed, uh, you look at many things, many of these things that I've tracked down uh, that I have had debates with with people over the years. Non-white people came up with this or non-white, and more power too. Every single thing that non-white people came up with, laud them and, and where those things have helped everyone on earth as so many of our discoveries, inventions, creations, etc., has helped everyone on earth, then that's fantastic. Take nothing away from, not a single thing. I am just not going to allow anything to be taken away from my people either. So I laud them for what they actually do. But very often you're right, Promethean promulgation, uh, that you come across these people and they'll say, well, this music or, or that saying or whatever has come from this community. What do you do? What's a great MC? I don't know off the top of my head that there is a single MC, but I tell you what, I'm going to think about it. And I'm going to reflect on the times that I've had these debates with people, uh, vagues specifically, who are not trying to white erase a part of our history, but who are just uh, misattributing or who were lied to by anti-whites. It is a fantastic question. <clears throat> but it is a great conversation starter to get into uh, using the lexicon, the dialectics, and then potentially introducing Go Free. Promethean promulgation, ladies and gentlemen. Tall Kevin, the one and only. $3 financial gift. Thank you, dear brother. I'd like to call tonight. Have a few victories in using the lexicon, but also a few questions. And how to avoid with unintended consequences. Absolutely, brother. You will be on the list, and I know I have it written down. So you are third, and we're going to get to more calls. Uh, let me put you here. You are third on the list, and we are going to get to more calls tonight. Thank you so much. We want to hear about those victories, and I want to answer those questions for you and everyone. Yes, the number one. What a wonderful, I mean, just wonderful woman. $5 financial gift, doing amazing things. Great to see two guys I know on tap on Friday. I hope to bring us more motivated young men like them who care about building a better future. They didn't even know the lexicon till a few months ago, and they are already using it correctly. Go free works. Well, God bless you, and God bless the both of them. Uh, DC Perspective. And what was the the pro? Uh, what was what was his? What was his? Um, yes, jump in, help me out, because it was a it was a word made out of a word. Both of them uh, 
absolute champions. And they were indeed very uh, astute uh, and uh, they were picking right up on and they were also convivial. I mean, so, so often uh, we come across these people in uh, white sympathetic spheres who are either implicit or explicit and they are uh, just, I'll just say not the easiest folks to get along with, right? Um, and uh, so they're problematic uh, and they're, they're not really amiable. Uh, uh, these two gentlemen were wonderful gentlemen, both of them, uh, both of them uh, quite sagacious. They were indeed picking right up on their realities. Uh, they, we were able, I know that with these guys that we could have disagreements and uh, that we would be able to uh, still be friends, still what they wouldn't be talking about. Uh, well, uh, Jason is a, and then fill in the blank with all of these horrible things that we see from other circles. Uh, they would be able to say, well, you know, he's agree with him here, don't agree with him there. And uh, that is the type of maturity we're going to need if we're going to be able to recapture our destiny. I was very impressed by both of those uh, young men and looking forward to having a conversation with them again in the future on tap and maybe even here on on going free. Uh, he is the eunuch doing marvelous things, going out into the world, folks, and into circles that are untrod and introducing brand new folks, good people, good ordinary folks uh, to the success of the practice of going free. It's just a practice less jargon than you had to learn for your uh, profession or trade. And you have to stick with it though, like working out. Prudentialist, I think is, I think it was the Prudentialist. Yes, that's it. DC Perspective and the Prudentialist is uh, the other guy's name. So Prudent, made off of Prudent. prudent. <laughs> and um, Magnificent. So uh, looking forward to speaking with them and others just like them, but magnificent when it comes to Yiz going out into these uh, brand new circles, because this practice, it's like working out, it's like eating right. You got to stick with it. You stick with it. You use it. You have success. You keep going to the gym or you keep working out. You keep getting out into uh, your basement or whatever it is and doing the workouts. You get into shape uh, and uh, no difference. It's that simple. Very straightforward. You want to walk away from it, uh, then you walk away from it. That's also something that's been that's been done before no problems there hey the great mrs jess horse is with us ladies and gentlemen 25 dollar financial gift thank you dear lady a woman raising her entire an entire baseball team's worth of kids uh, and participating in it, it well of course she's celebrating in service to white well-being she wants to inoculate them against what the world will do to them but she's able to be here as well this is a lovely woman uh, we have so many and she's she's taking videos where she, she's numerous. She's got the the TV is on, and I've seen it's either me is on it or Jared George is on it, and uh, the the children are there. They're watching. They're playing. She's making the house is immaculate. The decor is beautiful. She's making uh, healthy food from scratch for them. I mean, come on, it can be done. And Mrs. Jess Horse does it, 25 US dollars. Thank you, dear lady. I love this beautiful song. Speaking about Olivia Keys music that was just playing. Uh, these are the stories I will tell my children indeed. Kip and WG. And Kip just means keep it Promethean. It means that reason, logic, and evidence are at the core of decision-making uh, and interpretation. And a host of other things that you can find that are all uh, congruent with that, that you can find in Prometheus Rising and the other works that we create here in service to white well-being. God bless you, sister. Thank you for that. And a big kip to you as well. Let me turn around over here and see if we have anybody who has financially gifted over on Cash App. We will run this through and see what comes up. Let me get a, a drink of some coffee. I see our great champions are here. Roy Danton, Grayman the Gray, Brant Danger, right there in a row. Jerome V, another great champion. We just had him on, on uh, tap week before last. We have a financial gift here from Ace. And thank you, sweet sister. I dearly appreciate $20 from Ace, $20 from this 
wonderful lady. And she writes here, going free has definitely helped me, exclamation point. Thank you, exclamation point. $20 financial gift. And I want to remind everybody every single time to remember when these financial gifts come in, because it, it, it always gets me every single time. When these financial gifts come in, these are coming from working class people who have had every single one of these dollars taxed 10 times over before they're finally able to financially gift it. These are not rich people that have money to throw away. So God bless you, Ace. Thank you, sweet sister. And with that, those dollars, she is saying, and everybody is saying twice, this is a testimonial to the success of going free in my life and a testimonial to the success of going free in the lives of others that I've seen. And then following it up with the testimonial, going free has definitely helped me, exclamation point. Thank you, exclamation point. Well, God bless you. And I also want to mention that during my roll in, going free this past week, coming in just a hair too late was the wonderful I Love Jesus Christ. Another wonderful lady who financially gifted $5. Thank you so much. And she writes here in memory of Aaron Joshua DeHart, the young, uh, the I think one year old white baby who was uh, the claim right now um, by the uh, babysitter, which is probably anti-white to have behaved that way with a white baby, uh, is the claim that he was just doing a wrestling move. And that's what the anti-whites in the media are reporting, which of course leads people to believe what? Why would the anti-whites in the media report that way? Well, you do wrestling moves when you play with children. You just He was just playing and an accident happened. Don't you understand? Well, the one thing that the regime's media screwed up on was they shouldn't have told anybody that they, the child had ripped a pillow. So this was some sort of retaliation for misbehavior is what it seems like. But I know CNN will tell you the truth. And I know it'll be the exact opposite. Make sure you hear from voices on both sides of the aisle inside their anti-white narrative where you find that spectrum that doesn't exist in our story left and right. Doesn't exist here, but it exists for them. So speaking to them, make sure you listen to the voices on the other side. Five dollars. God bless this lady. And uh, let's let's pray uh, that uh, this uh, little Aaron Joshua DeHart is, is in the arms of uh, our Lord and no longer at the hands of that anti-white monster. God bless you. Uh, thank you very all. Be Vokish is here. Bob is here. Dylan is here. Seymour is here. Based Red Pill, Sebastian. Some people getting kicked out of the live chat. That happens. Uh, let's see. Boogie is here. Elaine Zabatino. And we're going to be talking about the wonderful Elaine. She said, well, maybe, I don't know. Uh, Elaine, maybe you could send me a private message right now on Instagram and tell me whether or not I can link uh, your the work that you're doing with the news story that I'm going to be uh, potentially because I have a couple news stories to read from. So there, uh, and you know, you know whether or not you are associated with any of those stories. So I will. Uh, not cover the one that you don't want me to cover. We'll do it. We'll, we'll put it that way. How does that sound? We got to keep each other safe, folks. And uh, again, because we do not dominate society. That's just the anti-white narrative talking. When you think, well, white people are everywhere. No, they're everywhere. No, we, we were 90 plus percent of the population. And even more than that earlier, uh, we were that, we were that percentage all the way up until, uh, what was it? The, uh, late sixties early 70s and it began to change? I don't know, you'll have to check it out for yourselves, but uh, let's see here. We have uh, Western Renaissance, great to see you. Art is life, hello sister, how are you? The great Roy Danton is with us. First Last is with us. We're gonna be talking about him. Don't go anywhere. Certifiable, that, that man, certifiable. <laughs> Could be. Could be IQ, could be other things. James is with us. Hello to you. The great Sonia. Welcome, dear sister. The Watcher is with us. Simon JJ, great to see you. I'm just walking through the crowd of heroes that we have here. What a magnificent gathering. Masumi Rabbit, hello to you. Brad C, another great champion here. Just day in and day out, getting the job done. That's... 
that's a, a real man. That's how a real man operates. The Magnificent Kevin, based guitarist, is here. Great to see you, brother. Ardent White is here. Hello, sweet sister. How are you doing? Great to see you. And uh, who more? Borpheus, Southern Daily News, Jilly Storm. Hello to all of you. Sabata is here. Hello to you. The great Bonnie Blue Lass is with us, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, sweet lady. Welcome, welcome to all of you. As I continue to slide, now this, is, of course, is Lycomedes is with us, and we're going to be actually, I think, playing some things from Lycomedes uh, up here very soon. Uh, so what a glorious day this is. Base Red Pill has opined that Jason is cool. I am the coolest, my friend. I am the coolest. And that's why only the coolest appear uh, in service to white well-being. Pants Monster is one of those as well. So Sky Cloud Tuesday FA is here. Hello to you and welcome. Uh, the absolute coolest. And that is why only the coolest show up here. This is like you know, this is the upper end party. I've been watching this, The Great Beauty. And uh, we're going to be on tomorrow with Mr. Jared George and Frody Midyard for the film festival review of the Italian movie, The Great Beauty. I think I might rename it The Great Pulchritude. The Great Pulchritude. Hmm. Maybe so. Maybe that'll be what I rename it. Because when people say beauty is in the eye of the beholder and the person is really quite unlovely. I retort, I have always quipped that pulchritude is in the eye of the beholder. The word so very ugly and supposed to mean pretty, it is apropos. Please use it as you wish. Who else do we have here? We have, let's get a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of raucous emojis for Rim Rep, who has just financially gifted 50 Canadian bacon dollars. Thank you so much. Rem Rep, thank you so 50 Canadian bacon dollars and writes, thanks for helping to refine my argument style and make me more effective. I'm going to read that again because that is what I've been saying. Thank you so much, Rem Rep, both for the 50 Canadian dollars. That is a, a testimonial, but also for the testimonial that you have added here in verbiage, because this is what I've been arguing now for decades that we have to be able to improve the life of the individual if we're ever going to make a people out of this deracinated race. Every time they all want to talk about these big new parties, this big new flag, the big new this and the big new that. No, you've got to help people. People, you've got to make them better. You've got to make their lives better. You've got to, and that's what we do. And we've been doing it for many years, we have many thousands of testimonials and you too can be one of those testimonials moving forward, folks. And Rim Rep says here, thanks for helping me to refine my argument style and make me more effective. It's everything is said there. Don't, don't have to add anything else to that. God bless you and thank you, Rem Rep. TJ, financially gifting $30. Thank you so very much, TJ, 30 US dollars and writes here, toward white well-being all over the world. Amen to that. That is glorious. Toward white well-being all over the world. God bless you, and thank you very much for that financial gift. Hey, the great Mr. Bloom has shown up, and everybody knows and likes Mr. Bloom. He's financially gifted twice here, $10 each time, making a total of $20. US dollars. Thank you, dear brother. He first writes, Promethean Hales, Jason, today... I have just swept through my social uh, medias and I have decided to somewhat rebrand. I will be going through everything I have posted across my social media to find anything playing into the anti-white narrative. Well, God bless you. What a commitment uh, and what a disciplined uh, young man, Mr. Blum. What a champion uh, to do that, to go back through and say, I am going to not be part of their story. I am not going to be a chump in their story. All of these other people, name this group. You got to have this kind of ideology. You got to have that kind of economic and that kind of government and this kind of, you got to be, you got to name this other group all the time. They're just chumps. They're just being chumps in somebody else's. I would love that. I would love, I could imagine if I were writing a story where there was like some supreme villain and he was controlling some population and he had made in the entire mind of the entire population this one behavior x uh he had made that evil 
and everybody's everybody thought it's evil. And then the villain, that supreme villain, had convinced those who are going to fight against him to mimic like a chump that behavior. My God. And I've been telling I've been telling folks this for so long, and you all are the only ones to get it. And Mr. Bloom gets it so hard, as as uh, Imminent Rain would say, uh, Prometheus uh, Prometheus uh, hails so hard, as he would say, Mr. Bloom gets it so hard that he's going back and everything that he's done before, and he's saying, I'm getting rid of everything where I was a chump in their story. God bless you, brother. What a champ. He also writes here, I have a new gab, but my Twitter and Instagram are still the same accounts with new names. You can find my social media at Linktree, and he, he uh, it's Linktree forward slash B R I T B O N G underscore B L O O M, where anything white positive is welcome, as that is everything you will get from me, writes Mr. Bloom. God bless you, he writes, and the audience. Well, God bless you, brother. What a champion. That's somebody whose name is going to go down in history right there. God bless you. You'll be a name. You'll be on our wall of heroes, and they'll be writing stories about you. Art is life. Sweet sisters chiming in. Great to see you. $5 financial gift. And she writes here, for white well-being. Both of those, a great testimonial to the great work we're doing. And I saw you standing up for me, Artist Life. I always see when folks, I, I learn, little birdies come to my, little. literally, I don't know if you all could hear, when I started doing the Sermon from the Mount about uh, our, our, our going free lesson of the day, there was a beautiful little Carolina wren singing right outside this. He just started up right on cue. And he began singing, serenading us as uh, we were saving Western kind and Western civilization, as it should be. Uh, thank you very much, Artist Life. So the little birdies, they show up at the window and they speak to, and they say, hey, Jason, this person was standing up for you the other day, and this person was saying something. Uh, this person was uh, advancing white well-being in this chat or this chat or whatever. I don't get to hear about everybody. I wish I could, and I wish we could. We're trying to put everybody's names up, and we'll take this moment really quickly to mention that I don't have it with me, but I will hold up the White People's Quarterly. We the, the new issue is out when I have mine. I'm, you better believe I'm going to be uh, celebrating and we'll all talk about it. There are a host of names of champions in it. And uh, we want to thank again the great Final Blossom once again and uh, Althea Promethea, who both worked on gathering those names. We have a long list of names yet to be added in subsequent issues. Uh, we're going to be adding more names uh, on, a, on a page, just like we did in this current issue. Uh, is your name there? Well, you're going to have to purchase your copy of the current white people's quarterly. Uh, I do not, I make no money off of white. This is Tony Vermont's operation and there's, uh, there's no kickback to me. I make no money off of it. This is how it has to operate. I want everybody who participates in service to white well-being, if they have to, those who are creating the content, those who are on the front lines, able to make enough to get by in the world that's all we could ask for, enough to get by in the world so that we can continue to do what we do for white well-being. Remember, there is no support shaming in service to white well-being. God bless Tony Vermont and everybody who's getting named and everybody who will be named. But be aware, of course, if you don't see your name appearing and you're doing a lot, you're out there, you're making it happen, and you don't see your name appearing in this issue or the subsequent or the subsequent or whatever it is, reach out and tell us. Uh, we uh, we're human beings, and it's it's entirely possible that you uh, that there are going to be people. And in fact, I guarantee it: people that we don't end up getting their names in. But even if we do it for five issues in a row, and we take a break, and then some more later, it it will get done. We're keeping our eyes open, and we celebrate everybody who's serving white well-being. God bless every single one of you. Uh, there, hourglass is turned uh, upside down, and the the sands of time are running through on uh, the time that's left for Western kind, Western civilization. If we're not able to take charge of that hourglass, if we're not able to wrest it from the hands of the anti-white, it will end for us. So it's gonna come down to you. No politician, no great leader, no great thinker, no great whatever is going to get out in front and save the day. No, I'm standing there shoulder to shoulder with Mr. Bloom, Artist Life, uh, the Watcher, uh, everybody else. We're shoulder to shoulder. It is a team effort. That's how we're going to make this happen. And we're going to be doing it with love in our hearts 
and 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 peace and joy in our voices and not stopping for anything not allowing any more uh, of these uh, grievances against us any more of the victimization of our people putting an end to every single one of those episodes thank you artist life we now have the watcher who we just mentioned 25 dollar financial gift god bless you the watcher coming in who happens to be watching and writes here i've been with you heroes and champions for a few months and i still keep discovering evidence that the practice of going free is the most powerful approach anyone has discovered for enhancing white well-being my god what a glorious testimonial that is a big salute to you uh, the watcher financial gift of $25 that's a testimonial and this verbiage which I'm going to read again and by the way he writes the word still in all capital letters to make sure that the point is being driven home I've been with you heroes and champions for a few months and I still keep discovering evidence that the practice of going free is the most powerful approach anyone has discovered for enhancing white well-being Thank you so very much, The Watcher, and uh, what a champion you are for stepping up. These sort of testimonials, folks, are going to make differences in people's lives. You can participate in that way. You can also participate by getting in touch with Naderific uh, and getting on the outreach team. They are doing magnificent work. I was, I was really bragging about them last night, I must say, and they are doing great work in seeding the lexicon and dialectics out into the milieu so that the conversation that takes place is one in which our ideas are empowered our premises are present is one in which people can they can smell that redolence upon the air and you know what happens not every one of them will follow the redolence back to its succulent source but many will many will and they'll come back here, they'll find their way, they'll say, where did that come from? Where would the, where are people talking about that? And then they'll say, really? It was that that small, but um, absolutely omnipotent community over there? Well, I'm gonna go check it out and become a part of that. And before you know it, uh, the uh, as I said before, it'll be like these 200 apostles or so uh, will, will be speaking to millions tens of millions, hundreds of millions around planet Earth. God bless you, the watcher. And here we have Ron coming in with a $10 great beard. I can see the avatar. It looks like you've got a great beard. Uh, $10 financial gift. Thank you, brother. It's gray, folks. It's got dark gray, it looks, and then light gray. He writes here, going free works. Then he says, a person said, quote, our pasty white rear ends, which I named as being anti-white. They went overboard explaining how it was not anti-white, tried to make me look like I was bullying them when I did not back down, and they ended up looking foolish for all to see. Our noble brother Jason is trustworthy. God bless you, Ron. That is fantastic. I want to read that again. So that was an interaction Ron had. Isn't that exciting? And then look at this. Raymond Foster has just shown up from down under. Now that is a great honor. Another Andromeda has shown up and so has HB 2014. How many uh, galactic superheroes are going to be showing up to this gathering? People that folks, if you don't know who they are, you should definitely know who they are. Ron says going free works. He had a, he, he was in a conversation with somebody that referred or that made the statement, our pasty white rear ends. And then he said, that's anti-white. They ended up, he says, going overboard, trying to explain how it's not anti-white. Oh, well, let me just let me just raise that bar a little bit for you. So, no, no, you're going to have to. No, you're going to have to keep. Yes, it's it. more, more. I get to decide how anti-white it is. You're going to have to do more to appease me. More, more still, Ron says, going overboard, tried to make me look like I was bullying them when I didn't back down. And then they ended up looking foolish for all to see. Our noble brother, Jason, is trustworthy. God bless you, brother. Thank you for that. Hey, how do you know whether or not a person is legit? By the fruits of their labors, right? Day in, day out, month in, month out, year in, year out, decade in, decade out. I have the same reputation. It's been the exact same all along. 
Oddly enough, though, that seems to make me quite boring. <laughs> People are like, you mean his life isn't wrecked? He doesn't, he hasn't like gone through all of these different wrecks. I've had plenty of ups and downs, but I have not been a, a, a the kind of person who leads people uh, into problems, who leads people into uh, things that harm them. And I've always been willing to be on the line with everything I was willing to do with anything I was recommending. Uh, and if that makes me boring, then so be it. Maybe boring one of these days will be what gets lauded what gets put into the neon lights rather than the garbage that everybody wants to watch today and say, what about your champions? I'll just swivel around really quickly here and have another look as I have another sip out of a different cup here. If you all haven't noticed that yet. Why does Jason have two coffee cups? What could it be? What could be in one and what could be in the other? Coffee in both. Coffee in both. One hot coffee, one cold coffee. Half cups each, so I have a full cup in total. That is precision. That's the way we do it as white men. We have Borpheus, financially gifting $5 over here. Thank you so very much, brother. It's a great financial gift, a great testimonial, and saying everything that he had to say with those $5, making it happen. God bless you. And look, it was, I was right. It was the prudentialist. I got that right. God bless. And Nancy Drew is here. Great to see you, sweet sister. Hey, we're going to have to have some rewinds. Anthony is here. Uh, hello to you. Artificer or something just went by. Great to see you. Welcome to you. Where are we on this list? Let's get down to here so we can keep rolling. I know the day is flying by. You know what we have here, ladies and gentlemen? We have the great Lycomedes. And he has decided to share or create this wonderful, this uh, wonderful poem that we read. I did a terrible job, but he read it and did a better job. And this is, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, like comedies, that uh, this is intended for the artist edition of Prometheus Rising that we will be creating after uh, the audio book of Prometheus Rising. So artists out there, if you're interested, artists of all stripes, and we are going to be setting, I have somebody very, uh, a lot smarter than me telling me, you've got to set a deadline for these artists, and I will. I'll be setting a deadline soon. Uh, the deadline's not soon. I'll be letting everybody know what the deadline will be soon for artists to participate. But it's music, it's poetry, all types of music inside that that are, are it is based inside the universe of Prometheus Rising. Uh, paintings, di digital art, sculpture. How can we put that in? Well, if you if you create a a sculpt like this, for example. We can take a photograph of it. We can put it in uh, the photograph in one of the pages of the Prometheus Rising uh, Artist Edition. Talk about magnificent and a team effort. People are going to love that. Uh, and uh, that's how we can do that. With the music, we can put the links in there to as many links as possible uh, so that it will be preserved as long as possible for people to be able to find the music in the future and celebrate those who want to use their real name, celebrate those who want to use a nom de guerre, celebrate those who even just want to stay in pure anonymity. Like comedies, ladies and gentlemen, where is like comedies? It is called, the poem is called World Wide Kin. And we will hear from, well, like comedy says, I read it well, but uh, thank you. And, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do a better uh, reading of it in the future. But this is like comedies himself, ladies and gentlemen. So the room will go hush as we listen. In marble halls, forest glades, and skies azure, the west moon shines bright and strong. On mountain peaks, lunar plains, and waters pure, the western spirit moves along. In many ways does the soul of western kind express from the dawn of our spirit to the full midday sun. Vivid light over vast fields and every gilded tress. Yet our Promethean story has only just begun. We are the decided Promethean ranks, living for ascension of sacred ideal. To the unbroken line of heroes we give thanks, and Westmen unite with Promethean zeal. 
The new sunrise is coming soon, we know, for our champions have a perfect will. Our children shall reap the harvest we sow, for we voice our spirit with unmatched skill. All the monuments of western kind across our lands, manifold reflections of our inner drive, once more we shall hold our destiny in our hands. And countless Western generations shall thrive. For the brilliant light is coming, the day we will win. Cast off the yoke, break the spell of poisoned words. We shall be Western kind pristine, a worldwide kin forever kept safe by our Promethean's words. Magnificent, Lycomedes, magnificent. Thank you so much for creating uh, this wonderful poem and then reading it into a uh, video for everyone so that we could share it here. Let's get a big round of applause for the great Lycomedes. And I wanted to ask you also, Lycomedes, you have a a uh, recent video with a song, I think it's called Hero's Journey. Uh, is that an original creation of your own? Uh, and uh, if so, is, is it intended for the artist edition of Prometheus Rising or was it just something you created and you wanted to share? Um, because I, I, I wasn't told one way or the other. No White Kill Clips is here and so is William Runner. Great to see both of you champions. Uh, let's see here, trying to navigate and okay. Thank you all so very much for that. The spelling of the Eindelin, I-Y-N-E-D-E-L-I-N, Eindelin. Thank you so very much, everyone, and great to see everybody here. Patriot One is with us. Oh my gosh, my back. My back workout rocked me. <laughs> uh, so let's see, what is this doing? Why is it doing anything? It shouldn't be doing anything. I assume everyone can hear me okay. Let's keep rolling. Uh, you know what, folks? Fraulein Dresden takes commissions, and she shared with us these wonderful cards that she created and these were the spring cards and let's see where are they they should be are they not here they should be hmm let's go up one more could i put them here nope where could they be anyhow they're all gone uh, people have jumped right on top of those so if you wanted your own uh, you did not you didn't get a chance uh, this time, but next time, remember to make a move on these. I will share one right now so you can, one set. Set one. Aren't those lovely? Magnificent. These are made by hand by this wonderful lady, Fraulein Dresden. She does take commissions. So if you are interested in having some handmade cards like this, and uh, it might, might be other sorts of things that are, are, that are related to this sort of uh, creative work that uh, you might be able to commission her to do. Uh, just wanted to let everybody know that she does take commissions, but the final two sets uh, went to uh, Bonnie Blue uh, Lass and First Last. So both of those individuals saying, I've got to have them. I've got to have them. Don't let anybody else. And so next time, folks, I'm, I know she'll be making more for the future. She's a wonderful woman, great heart, and uh, we, will, uh, we will have more. But uh, as for now, these are gone. Now, you would pay a, a lot for these in a little boutique where handmade things like this. And of course, who is going to be hand making them? It's not going to be making one of our wonderful ladies. You know that. Uh, it's going to be somebody else, somebody else. Uh, but uh, this is uh, wonderful of her, and thank you so very much, 
uh, for bringing that. And it's, it's a wonderful addition to the community and the great work that we're doing, the loving work that we're doing to have things of beauty because beauty is a virtue. It is as important as law and order or justice or truth. The one of the one of the cures people, you know, people are suffering right now with bibs. And if you don't remember what uh, bibs is, uh, our great groundhog fury improved upon what I had done. I was, I, I uh, had fallen short in my explanation, and he took what I what I had said and said, he, "I'm going to make it into something better than Jason did." He put it into bibs, and there you have. Biden-induced bipolar syndrome, help your friends recover. Grown men shouldn't have bibs. Uh, and so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you're suffering from bibs, you're either extraordinarily depressed or you are thinking that you should go the direction of a villain inside the anti-white narrative. Don't do either. One of the cures for that is, of course, uh, going free. And what we've talked about before, having victories by doing the things that we do here that, that everybody is having victories doing. But beauty is also uh, a cure to bibs. It's a cure to depression. Uh, you can go to these places where our masters have made glorious works. You can go to them right online. You can go to the Eiffel Tower right online. You can go to these beautiful towns anywhere. Across. You can just go there right online and you can feel your biosphere harmonizing with the, these great works, and it will invigorate you. It will enliven you, and you will be able to march forward again. Make use of beauty when you need it. Final Blossoms, uh, listen, collection basket here is hilarious, and I wanted to share this with everybody. The man is unstoppable. Now, this is a, it's tongue in cheek, this video he created, it's fantastic. Uh, it's tongue in cheek. And, uh, and of course, right now, just to let everybody know, we're in the announcements segment and we will be moving into the community share segment in just a moment. Uh, so this is kind of a, a both, it's kind of a segue in between, uh, but uh, it's, it's a bit tongue in cheek, but there is, there is some, uh, some more to it, some meat to it. And the meat is, I guess I'll share it after I share the video. So a bit tongue in cheek at first here. I think I've got it here on a video file. Let's see. And uh, we'll run through this. <laughs> what a champion this guy makes one thing. I, so we'll, we'll open this up. We'll watch this video and uh, have a little chuckle. But then I'll tell you where there is some some meat to this. There is some, I think, some an important message to this. Here we go. Welcome to the no white guilt community during this break. We'll be passing around the white well-being collection basket. Naturally, when the basket comes to you, you can pass it on without contributing anything. Although, those sitting next to you will likely notice. So there is a bit of peer pressure. You can alleviate that pressure by putting in a dollar, or five, or more, if you're feeling generous. You can make a one-time contribution or commit to a monthly contribution. Check the video description for details. On behalf of Western Kind, thank you. So that is, uh, as I say, a bit tongue in cheek. It's a little bit of fun. He made this video. He said, hey, this is, I think this is hilarious. And I did too. But there is a, a message there. And I think the message is that we have, and it can't it can't continue this way. We have a, a handful of people who give uh, decent sums, very decent sums for working class folks. I mean, big sums of money. And then you have a lot of people that just are free riders. And uh, that's the way I, I think I guess it all it normally is in most places and in most endeavors. But we can't be that way here. And we should not put the responsibility for financially gifting white well-being on the shoulders of a few and just it's it's immoral to do so if everybody financially gifted a little bit nobody would have to financially gift a lot nobody would have to be i don't know for all i know i mean i mean uh, final blossom uh, and and so many others with their 
with their uh, princely uh, financial gifts, I don't know how close they are or, or not to maybe being in a bad state. I mean, maybe a car accident away, maybe, a, I don't know. I mean, that's how it is being a working class person, right? So if we all shoulder the, the load, then nobody will have to shoulder the majority of it or, or no handful will have to shoulder the majority of it. It makes it easier on everyone. And uh, I've been paying into white well-being my entire life, my entire life. So I know exactly what it's like. And I, I know what this, I know that there's a message, a, a genuine, I'm not saying that Final Blossom had intended it, uh, but maybe uh, I, I'm thinking, uh, looking out for him and looking out for the others who financially gift often and financially gift uh, larger sums. Uh, that uh, there are quite a few people who who don't give anything, and uh, it, it's it's putting a little bit too much pressure on those folks. Uh, so if we were all to to give a little, then it, it wouldn't be uh, so much of a burden on uh, people like Final Blossom and so many that I uh, can't name right at the moment. But that's great, Final Blossom, and we'll use it again. Uh, we'll use it again in the future. Thank you, brother. Uh, let's move on to, I want to share, but I want to touch metal first to make sure I don't lose this mic and throw electricity. Move on to community share. Who are some people who are doing some good work in the community that you should be following? How about, did I mention, I think I mentioned last week, intellectual embargo. Uh, how about this week, uh, Jerome V. Did I mention Jerome V last week? I don't know if I did. Did I mention Jerome? Here is Jerome's link. Thank you so very much, brother, for all the hard work that you do in service to white well-being. Intellectual embargo as well. Don't remember if I mentioned him or not. He's busy working on a new video about the anti-white narrative, and it's going to be glorious. And there's his link as well. So we will, we will continue to share each other, uh, share each other's work, and build this community in uh, these overlapping uh, circles the way that we are, different centers of gravity all moving in the same direction to reclaim our destiny in a way that makes it infinitely difficult for the anti-whites to shut down the recapture of our destiny. There are many things that they can do. Lie about us uh, is one of the most obvious, and we'll be talking about that in just a moment. Why don't we, uh, I don't know, maybe we should watch a, to put a little separation between the between the uh, announcement segment and the uh, community share, which we should have bled there together, uh, was probably the right thing to do there. And then the uh, thaumaturgical mailbag. Remember, that's the adjective for thaumaturgy. You, all of you young people out there, magic, in other words. Break that out on your professors and watch their eyes go cross. We'll be right back. That's it. I don't feel guilty. I don't feel guilty for being white. That's an anti-white slur, miss. You're just saying that because I'm white. You're anti-white. There you go. Love that piece of footage there, folks. Love it. Defeating the anti-whites in the streets with ease with ease. And there were people you didn't see in that uh, park there that heard that exchange. What do you think they thought? Maybe some of them thought, wow, that's anti-white slur. I'm going to use that. Fantastic. Well, we're dipping into the mailbag, folks. And what do we find? We like to dip into the mailbag, don't we? We always like to see what's down here. Well, what do we have? We have the great Heidi, the great Grayman the Gray and Heidi, this wonderful couple. And this woman is uh, and, and gentlemen are magnificent. She has sent me in the mail, handcrafted, she writes here, placemats to, to be machine washed and dried when I naturally get them dirty. And she says, uh, hope you are having a great week, Heidi. I, I, it got better as soon as I got all of the, look at that, it's got the fancy paper on it. Look at this. 
you always got to take a look at the effort that's put into the presentation, the presentation of, of a gift, the presentation of food, there's thought put into it. And so you should appreciate it. And I do. Uh, if I, if I fail to mention that's my fault, I, but I, 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 in my heart, I'm appreciating know that I, I open this up and look what's in these are look at that these are plate and look it's got this lovely bow on it this is each one each one has got a magnificent bow she's tied these up she's made these by hand can you believe this i love it thank you sister i love you this is fantastic you and your lovely husband i uh, can't wait to be able to meet you all in person from arms around you these are these are glorious and uh they uh, what is it again? You you put Febreze on it or something? They smell great. Uh, that's that's from Heidi. Thank you so much, sister. And you know what it actually reminded me of? And I wanted to share this because I don't recall a, a another lovely woman. Now, she didn't make this, but she did gift this to me. And uh, it, it wasn't recently. Uh, but I was trying to recall, did I mention uh, that uh, she had gifted this to me? Uh, this was some time ago, but I want you to take a look at that. This is a scarf, and look at how glorious this is. I mean, can you see there in the in the camera? Isn't that marvelous? Yes, I will be able to wear This will look great on my black leather jacket uh, and on my pea coat. And uh, Jared George, eat your heart out. And uh, he always looks so good, doesn't he, Mr. George? But, yeah, this is going to get me a little closer to looking as suave as Mr. George it's so soft, uh, and thank you, sister. This is wonderful. I can't wait. To, I can't wait to be able to use it again. And it's green. I've got green eyes, so it will probably light them up like Las Vegas. Now, what we've got next to share you is going to help us segue right into uh, the next segment, which is the news segment. But I want to. I want to share. This is marvelous. We received in the mail. Folks, this absolutely lovely. What? There is a uh, there is a, a woman with with the powers of of uh, I don't know beyond a human being, and uh, definitely beyond the powers of a human being. The have as fecund as she is, as prolific as she, as intelligent as she is, as as tenacious, as industrious. I mean, it's just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. She writes, Dear Jason, with this lovely little heart sticker. Should I should I read that as well? I'm so worried about saying, she says, yes. I'm looking at it here. She says, yes. That article in the Sentinel is great news for white well-being. I've approached... Uh, let me see. I've got to see what I want to read specifically. So she as she's approached people who look patriotic. And the vast majority of them are very receptive to white to the white positive message. Well, isn't that a change? Isn't that a change? How many people have you approached? I want, I want you everybody to take an honest approach. Don't you don't have to speak up. Have you approached strangers? To help them go free? to empower them with some verbiage, to give them the website? Have you approached strangers in a safe place, in a safe way? Have you? This lovely woman has many times over. And she says they have been very receptive, very receptive, underlining, to your white positive message. Well, well. And she's finding that more and more. What's driving this lovely woman? What is driving her? The successes, the fact that it works, the fact that she's making a difference in the world. How I wished that, that I had going free in the early days when I was handing out those god-awful leaflets at, at different uh, bluegrass festivals and carnivals and all over the place. They were wretched. They were wretched. People would look and they would be like, oh my God. And they would they would crush it and throw it away. So she has some, and talk about every one you want to, you, you, I would have like, oh, oh my God, I don't even know. How many would I go through before I finally got one person that said, well, yeah, that's, that's true. I, it, I was just, every time I was like, here you go. And uh, then it would be some sort of horrible response. 
now you get something very different with the white positive messaging. She says she has accidentally startled a few because people are so, especially uh, white folk, uh, we are taught to be so individualistic. We can't just talk to, can't just walk up and, and easily start to talk about being a guy and walking up and talking to women. I, I have made that a serious, I don't know how many I've gone up to over the years back in the day, not anymore, but back in the day, I used to go up to uh, just about every single and start talking. Uh, the guys, uh, not so much of a problem. The women, I, I doesn't matter how friendly, how well dressed, how well groomed, how clean shaven, how doesn't matter. It's just, oh my God, oh my God, he's talking to me. So she says she startled a few people by accident, walking up, excuse me, <gasps> are you saying something to me? And she uh, would like if I would uh, just apologize for her. She is sorry for startling you. I am sorry as well that you became startled when she walked up. But many of these people as well ended up, even though startled, they ended up being very receptive. Yes, I will take a look at that. That sounds that sounds really positive. I absolutely will. Hear. How many how many people do you think you could come up to? I mean, really, you don't have to say it out say it out loud because you know I support everyone who does something that is going to is going to serve our people well as white sympathetic and it comports with my personal morality. I support all of that. So you don't have to pick any particular group or people out, but just be honest. Just be honest. How many of the other messages could you go up to average people in the street? and say, hey, check this out. And you know, not be someplace where, where you knew that everybody just about already agreed with you, or they were all senior citizens. So what were they gonna do? You chase you with their cane or something? I mean, come on. She says, uh, keep fighting the good fight, brother. I could not do it without going free. And she writes here, and this is a lovely, take a look at how beautiful that is. You know what that is, don't you? Well, wait, is it? Let me look. Actually, hmm. it is not. I, I thought, I guess we are looking at their, the, is that the Viceroy or the Monarch? Does it say on the card? At first I thought Tiger Swallowtail. These are the names of butterflies. How would that evil guy know the names of butterflies? P.S. Thank you for your gifts. I really appreciate all you do for our community. Elaine. God bless you, lady. You are one of a kind. You are absolutely one of a kind. Thank you so much for everything you do. Uh, what a champion. And she has sent to me some of the most beautiful. And I'm going to suggest from now on, folks, that we move in this kind of direction because it is so, look at this. Look at how lovely this is. One after the other are just, one is prettier than the next. One after the other is doing what? It is disarming the, the general public by showing them who and what we truly are that we are really motivated by love, that we are really motivated by concern, that we are really motivated by care, that we are really motivated to do good for folks, that every one of every immutable characteristic is not only welcome to participate, but we want you to participate. Please, please do the right thing. If you are of uh, any of the non-white races, please do the right thing and, and help us serve white well-being and put an end to the victimization of Western kind before you lose what you care about as well. These are gorgeous. That one is my particular, that one is my favorite. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, those are strips of bacon. And now my mouth is going to begin to water. Not figuratively. Look at this. You go out and you find something like that posted. Oh, think about all of the think about all of the white sympathetics right now who are going to mock something like this. And how many lives has she already improved? And how many lives do they ruin? You know, we had that girl we talked about 
uh, a a few months. I guess it was, yeah, maybe almost two months now, uh, where eighteen year old woman and we had a few ladies reach out to her to try to get her attention, to give her, to empower her with a with a movement of love, with a message of love. And as far as I know, she hasn't responded. I can guarantee you this. If she ends up hearing from and heading down the path of these ant nat nitwit losers, her life will be ruined. And those ant nats, they will be delighted that her life is ruined. Delighted. And that is disgusting. They'll be telling her, oh, you gotta, you have to hate this other group of people. You have to focus on everything they've ever done. You have to refer to yourself the way they refer to you. You have to on and on and on. It's going to ruin her life. And what did I hear uh, this just the other day? And uh, you know, I, I th this was a, a show uh, that I'm not going to name the folks, but they had a guy on that is kind of a a uh, bit of a, a, a rising star. And I, I, I didn't watch the whole show. I was actually looking for something else. And I just, I guess maybe God himself, when I, when I slid the, the bar over to start the video, what did I land on? I landed on one of these hosts telling this young man that what he has to do, uh, he's still young. He says, you're still young. So when you get older, you'll realize that you have to focus all of your energy or so, so many words, he says, you have to focus on this other group of human beings and you have to talk endlessly about this other group of human beings and, and on and on. I could not believe that it was his recommendation. Thank God the young man said, no, they would like that too much if I did that. Thank God he did that because if he heads down that road, he's ruined. His life it will be over. Look at this. Now, this is painted. This is a work of art. This is a work of art. You're heading through town and you see something like this. You are going to you are going to get a picture, you're going a picture, you're going to go to this website. Maybe you'll take it because of how lovely it is. It just gets better and better. Look at how glorious this is. Did I tell you that this woman she must She's obviously half God. She's some sort of demigod uh, because it's just the amount of, of work that she's doing. So what do you all think about, in all seriousness, um, what do you all think about this idea that, no, it's got to be harder. It's got to be crueler. It's got to be meaner. It's got to be, well, this is what it has to be, actually. This is what gets results. So do we want results or do you want to just look like a mean fool? Look at this. Look at this. How are people going to receive this? This is what we are. We're love. We want to protect our people. We want to put an end to anti-white. That's anti-whiteism is destroying every Western country for everybody who lives in them. You got a problem with that, then you're an anti-white. I told you, we got one more. It just keeps getting better. What have you been doing? Look at this. What have you been doing with your time? What have you been doing with your time? How many TV, how many anti-white TV shows did you watch? How many, this is an island painted on a rock that says nowhitegilt.org on it. How many TV shows did you watch? How much time did you waste? You gonna let this, this glorious woman be the only one out there? getting in headline after headline after headline. How many movies and TV shows did you watch? This is fantastic. Let's get the biggest, wildest round of raucous emojis for Elaine that was ever seen on YouTube. God bless you, woman. I love you. You are a true champion. You are going to have a statue. You, you are going to have a statue for this kind of work. You go, people are going out and there are others, there are others who are painting rocks, others who are burning no white guilt into uh, little circles of wood, wonderful things. They put them out in the woods and people come up, wow, look at that. You know, put a heart on it, put a heart on it. 
write I love you on it. If you're in a, a, a maybe a coastal town, you got a lighthouse, you put the lighthouse, you put a heart, no white guilt.org, go free, no white guilt, whatever it is. Speak to our people. You want normal, ordinary people. You don't want people to look at it and think that they're looking at the villain from a CSI episode, for God's sake. God bless you. I would salute two, two hands salute to Elaine. You are glorious. You are a, a 35,000 times specifically better than all of these people who are creating content. They have massive audiences, much bigger than any audience I can put together. You are specifically 35,000 times more effective than they are because you are out in the world doing things uh, that result in lives being saved, improving the lives of Westman, which is the only thing that is going to recapture our destiny, is if we are changing the lives of our people. God bless you, sweet sister. And of course, everywhere that these things are being placed or have been placed, have been legal to do so. If any of them have been placed somewhere where they are not legally permitted to be, it is because where they're being placed has anti-whites. And we're going to be taking a look at one of these stories. And the anti-whites are known very well to take the things that we do and then to go put drop them in illegal places, to go put them places where they're not supposed to be. Hate hoaxes, folks. How many times do we have to see hate hoaxes before you finally start using that MC. If these show up anywhere where they're not supposed to be, it's hate hoaxes. If some crude imitation shows up somewhere, hate hoaxes. They're the works of anti-whites to make us look bad because the anti-whites know they're wrong. What a wonderful lady. What a, what a triumphant, glorious lady. And uh, we'll go right into the, uh, the next uh, segment and some news right after this. Oh, you're on time. Awesome. Most of the actresses in this town are always late. Oh, well, that's how I was raised. <laughs> that's wonderful. Great. So, yeah, as you probably know, the agency has brought me in today to do a little consulting. I'm like a consultant. We do this like one-on-one -on -one phone call. I've worked with some big names. I don't really like to say, but Scarlett Johansson, Angelina Jolie. Uh, you know, I don't really name drop, but Jennifer Lawrence, for example. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd heard. Yeah, great. And, and so let's assess the situation. You know, on one level, you've made it. You're here. Tinseltown. You know, you started off doing regional theater as a teenager, and over years you put in hard work. You maybe got a nose job. Oh, I, I haven't had a nose job. Maybe a little time on the casting couch. What? No, no, I never did that. All right. Well, 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 we all get here in our own ways, but like the point, the point is that you're here. You know, you started doing some bigger movies. You've been on TV shows, write magazines and blogs. I mean, it's every girl's dream, right? How many of your friends are still doing community theater like Dubuque or wherever the hell, you know? <laughs> well, I still like to do small theater, but yeah, it's pretty amazing and I'm so grateful. Yeah, let's go with that. Gratefulness, gratitude, that's awesome. So like what we're thinking is it's time for you to go to like that higher level. Well, I, I've been looking for a very emotionally fulfilling role. Uh, I'd like to perhaps be in a story about family. Okay. Yeah, great. Uh, I understand that your agent's looking at a script about adoption right now, but I'm really more the image guy, you know? And if we play this right, we strategize right, we could be looking maybe at Oscar nominations in a few years, you know, the supporting role, of course, but, you know. Okay, I'm listening. I'm here to do good work. Good, good, good. Okay. So there's been a progression over the last few years, okay? And we're thinking it's time for you to mellow the yellow. Uh. Mellow the yellow? Yeah, yeah, the blonde thing, the blonde thing. Oh, uh, you mean dye my hair for a role? Yeah, sure, if it makes sense no, for no, the character. No, no. <laughs> image guy, <laughs> image guy, remember? Uh, this is for you all the time, public perception. 
Well, what does it matter if I'm blonde when I'm not filming? This is my natural color. Well, they, you have to understand, like, this is the trend. This is the way it's going. And, like, we're thinking it's a permanent trend. That's what we're thinking. Oh, uh, do you mean it's hurting my chances of being cast? <sighs> right. Well, um, that could be one side effect. But, again, um, I'm more the you guy, not so much the characters you play guy. And, and just, in, like, in the whole context of the whole town, like, all right, let's just be frank. Like, you're the only one. You're the only actress in town who's still... Blonde? Yes! Well, it's my natural color. My family has roots in different parts of Europe. It's it's in my genes. Why, why would I want to okay. change that? Okay, sure. But, like, okay, you've seen the magazine covers. You've seen the A-listers at the events. But... I've always loved my long blonde hair since since I was a little girl. Okay. My, my uh, mom and I used to. It's so nice, but I mean, no one has it anymore. I mean, do you want to work? Do you want to work? Are you threatening me? No, 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 oh, oh, no, no. Of course not. I I couldn't threaten you. I'm I'm here like an advisor, like a like a friend. Okay, but um, like you have to understand, this is it's out there now in the culture. Like more girls with light hair dyeing their hair darker, even perms, and then we have the campus shave events where. Girls with light hair, like shaving their hair off. You've seen this? I, I thought that was just like a weird one-time thing. No, no. It's not. It's big. Like, this is what I mean. You need to be a little more plugged in. And that's where I come in. I'm like an advisor, like a friend. Like, even though I'm being paid for this, you know, everything in life's transactional on one level. On like a deeper level, we're talking, we're connecting. I feel like we're becoming friends, you know? Right? I, I can't say I agree. Okay. Okay. Trust. We need to establish more trust here. Okay, I'll be vulnerable. Even though I'm not one of these public people on the screen like you, I myself, under this very hat, I have like red hair with some blonde in it and my beard, and I'm undergoing the procedures to permanently darken my hair. How how can you dye your hair permanently? No, no, no. no. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's not dye. This It's the latest. It's gene therapy. My hair will actually start to grow in darker. Light hair... Blonde and red hair is a tiny percentage of the world's population. It's part of your heritage. Why, why would you do that? Okay, right. Okay, but as I keep explaining, like, this is the trend. This is the way it has to go. And, you know, the gene therapy is even going to help with the skin. The skin? Yeah, yeah. Like, that way when you eventually adopt, your kids will be more comfortable. You'll look more like them. What are you talking about? Uh, 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 you know what? Maybe we're not ready for the adoption talk quite yet, but you have to like take my professional advice here. Like, this is the trend. This is the way it has to go. Okay. Oh my God! I remember hearing about how the dumb blonde meme started a hundred years ago in Hollywood. This is hate. I love my features. No, no, no. no, no. You, you understand? Love actually requires. That we do this. There's a lot of girls that look up to people like you, actresses, and they need to see this. This is actually, like, this is a mark for me. Like, I personally, I can't wait. It can't come soon enough for me to get this hair color off of me and change. You need to get a grip. Okay. You know, I'm going to show, I'm going to prove it to you. You know what? I'm going to dye my hair right now. What am I waiting for? Why am I waiting for the gene therapy to kick in? This is sick. I have a better idea. I, ha I have a better idea. I'm going to shave my hair and my beard right now for you. Okay. I, I, I'm having no part in this. You know what? This is a mark. This is like the mark of the beast. I need to atone. Even shading's not good enough. I'm going to rip. I'm going to rip my hair and my beard out. My uh, <laughs> hands. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I think I'm going to get out of this business and buy that farm with my husband. How was that for a magnificent skit, ladies and gentlemen? Let's get a round of applause for the great Jared George and Philosophicat. Excellent. 
Uh, thank you both so much for that fantastic skit. Such a joy to be able to share the good work of those two wonderful people. If you can hear me all right, let me know, because going back and forth on the mic uh, and having these little back and forth as though this is some kind of uh, high dollar operation, which of course it isn't. Uh, uh, you have uh, one guy here and I keep throwing on different hats, but we have a, I want to quickly say that we have a magnificent uh, financial gift from I Love Jesus Christ once again, and that sweet woman back again, and a $10 financial gift. And it says, in memory of Linda Stoltzfus. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, and if this is a woman in another country, then it probably is pronounced very differently. But uh, thank you so very much. Uh, if somebody could say in the live chat what happened to that woman, uh, I would uh, really appreciate. I have not heard. So $10 financial gift from I Love Jesus Christ. God bless you, sweet sister. And uh, thank you for all that you do, your participation. We will refresh that. We'll jump on over to Entropy. We're going to get into this story here in just a moment after I have a look at what you all are saying. And we have uh, Desi Mack, financially gifting 10 US dollars. Thank you so very much. And uh, writing here, found you again. Cool. Well, I'm glad you found us again. I don't know what went wrong and how you lost us. But uh, finding us is always better than losing us. So here we are back together once again, Desi. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the financial gift. Yiz the eunuch back with three more dollar financial gift. God bless you, sister. She says, here's a few dollars for the white well-being basket. Pass it around. Well, amen to that. Uh, yes, that's that's glorious. Thank you for that. And I know Final Blossom will put a big smile on his face as well. So let's jump on over to this story as we appear to be caught up on the financial gifts. Uh, and we will see where is the story. I know I've got it here somewhere. I guess we'll share. We can share the screen. Uh, probably without getting into trouble. Let's see. Is this it? Is that the one? Ah, this is it. So this is from a rag called uh, Quartz. And you will see here, what they are doing is uh, in this article, and this was from, I guess it was two years ago. Uh, but, uh, oh, I don't want to show that in uh, Quartz. They are attacking white people and they're saying all white people are like that uh, symbol above if they if they care about uh, white well-being. And uh, this is Quartz magazine. And it says here, so talk, talking about the list goes on and they're talking about books that you can find on Amazon. And of course, having to associate. Now, this is two years ago, so you don't have to worry about a, a sudden response uh, from Amazon. They didn't. They they weren't just contacted or anything. And and they did go through the book. They hassled me a lot in the beginning. Amazon did, and uh, we went round and round. And finally, the book became Born Guilty became available on Amazon. Uh, they relented because it, there is nothing uh, that is uh, villainy or villainous in the uh, in Born Guilty whatsoever. Uh, so it says here, though, the list goes on. Amazon sells the Kindle version of the, and then, of course, a title that is objectionable, and uh, then some some more here, and then another title that, of course, is plays right into their uh, anti-white narrative, and uh, verbiage that does as well. And then they say here, Amazon also carries Jason Kona's Born Guilty, in which the author, quote, recounts his extraordinary struggle under the physical and psychological abuse of a society obsessed with an anti-white ideology, close quote. Well, as you can see, the author doing everything this anti-white author could do to try to demonize the others, all that author had to do was write their words. But that didn't work with me because I am based in white positivity. Yeah, I did that. I made it rhyme. And what they had to do as a consequence, the author, the anti-white author, is they had to follow it up with, it has been name checked on Twitter by former Ku Klux Klan Grand Wizard David Duke. But what the hell does name checked mean? You know what's glorious about that is that every single person who reads this uh, is who actually gets down to this deep in this court's article is going to 
come to this point and they're going to say, oh, Carrie's this Jason Connors born guilty, born guilty. That really doesn't sound like a very aggressive title, does it? They're going to say to themselves. And then they're going to say, uh, well, what, what does it say? What are they? They're going to they're gonna quote him now. Surely it's going to be something villainous right out of all of those TV shows and movies and books I've read. And it says then here they're going to zero and they're going to say recounts his extraordinary struggle under the physical and psychological abuse of a society obsessed with an anti-white ideology. Well, that really does not mesh with the villain. I'm trying to find a villain in the in the article here, and I, that's really not meshing. This person is talking about being abused by an anti-white ideology. Well, I don't like how that makes me feel as a vague or. Uh, or most anti-whites. Some anti-whites are going to celebrate it. Yes, we are abusing them, they would say. But the remainder are going to say, well, I'm not very comfortable with that. I, I would rather call them the bad guys instead of me being anti-something. It's there. They're the ones that are the anti. And so surely there's something more here about what makes this Jason guy so evil and all those people who read his books and practice that, that thing that they do over there. What does it say? Oh, it says here, let's see. Uh, it has been name-checked on Twitter name checked by former Ku Klux Klan Grand Wizard David Duke. Who the hell is that? And why the hell does that matter? How does that have anything to do with this previous guy? Tell me how he's evil. Well, he's not evil. And there are going to be a lot of people who are going to read this. And this is the same sort of success that you all have, that we have the testimonials. They come in from everyone saying, well, I've success time and again, and I find more ways that there are success. And Success like I never had. Why? Because we're speaking from our hearts. We're speaking about uh, who we are, what we are, what we actually want to do. And as long as we continue to project who we are, the, the anti-whites, yes, they will lie about us. But it is not them that we are trying to persuade. It is our brothers and sisters out there, the vagues. And when they read things like this, their minds are going to be, many of them, opened. And the ones who thought that they had a nice firm conviction and they could just shut down anybody who wasn't anti-white, now they're going to wonder, is it one of those going free people? Because they're, I wouldn't want to actually throw them into the same bucket. And so they're going to end up being paralyzed. They're not going to be able to act with the fervor, with the zeal, with the rage that they had before because the certainty is gone. And that is just as good as bringing them over to the service of white well-being. So I really got to thank Quartz uh, for doing, uh, reaching out and, and uh, doing a hit piece and including me in the hit piece, attacking white people, of course, showing ugly symbols and things on their articles. Scary, scary. Uh, and uh, it is scary. Those people are scary. Uh, was one of them that that wanted to uh, hear me burn alive uh, in a uh, with the video where he sent of a of a human being burning alive in a car. Uh, so they they're sick people. They are hateful people. They are focused on other groups of people. They want to harm other groups of people. We want nothing to do with that. Remember, I gave you all that little exercise, and I said that uh, just ask any of these people if they had the opportunity to blind, just snap their fingers, and it would blind one of these groups that they focus on and they hate so much, but it would also blind some white person in society, would they do it? And of course the answer is, yeah, they would go ahead and blind one of the group, uh, a member of the group that they hate. And who cares if it ended up, that's what they would say, blinding some white person out there. They have no concern for that. Well, we have the exact opposite position. We're worried about that person's blindness and uh, our sight. We want to make sure that they don't lose their sight. And we also don't want to uh, victimize somebody for the way that they were born. So I uh, appreciate courts trying to stick my name in there and do the best they can to make me and us look bad. But ultimately, it was feckless. And uh, that sort of thing is just going to bring more people to the service of white well-being, more people to realize that authors uh, the authors of and editors of Quartz are anti-whites themselves. Why would you include this Jason Kerner guy in his Born Guilty book? It's nothing similar to what these other people are saying at all. So why would you include it? Uh, so thank you, Quartz, for that. And on uh, that note, we have a really magnificent 
piece of uh, news that we were talking about a moment ago that I wanted to share with everybody. But you know what? I might want to pick this up a bit. I might want to, I might want to get a little excited with some music. Let's hear some Fernal after this. Hey, he's gone. This is Raymond from the Australian Vanguard. I'm just walking down to my local shopping centre and I'm going to go in and grab myself a coffee. With this. <laughs> Let's see if I get some good reactions. Take it easy. G'day. Reactions have been freaking awesome. I've got old women smiling at me. I've got people running up to high five me. I've got um, old men and women driving past like grandmas beeping and like sticking their hands out the window, giving me thumbs up. Like every second person's giving me a thumbs up and smiling. People are saying, good job, mate, good job. I'm, I'm saying, love yourself. And they're like, that's right. <laughs> it works. It works. Know why guilt was right. It's about time people start listening. I'm just trying to help my people 
It's almost like we have a regular show out of this gathering. It's magnificent, folks, but a great for an old tune. really fires me up. I turn it all the way up. Uh, so many uh, may create great music and service to white well-being, and I turn them way up. Hey, if you want to get in on the calls in uh, just a little bit, you're going to have to make sure if you're with us, uh, we do have a list. But if those folks aren't here, then uh, we uh, will skip them and move on. So if you are here, send me a message on Skype to let me know that you were here and that you would like to uh, participate in a brief phone call, and uh, I will call you back when it is time. So please do that. And if uh, maybe the mods could remind people in about uh, 20 minutes or so, the same thing, I would really appreciate it. So let's jump over to this, this uh, other news item. And I will, uh, I will just, uh, I won't bother putting it up. We'll just, we'll read it from, I'll just read it to you right here. We'll go through this uh, relatively quickly. This is, uh, the article's title is Racist Messages. Now, of course, translate. Uh, her heretical to anti-white uh, anti messages on rocks, flyers, shock, Santa Cruzans as a propaganda uptick, mirrors state combination. And this is by Cueto, someone by that name. I don't know if I said it with the proper pronunciation as in uh, this uh, anti-white woman's native tongue. But Cueto writes, white supremacist, now remember we were covering that earlier in the MPs, propaganda has been found on rocks and flyers around Santa Cruz County recently. The incidents which have been discussed on social media and most recently in a Capitola City Council meeting last month that prompted some to worry about their neighbor's stance on racial and social equity. Can you believe it? Yes, yes, can you believe it? Neighbors, they have to wonder there's this horrifying thing out in the world, right? But the propaganda found in Santa Cruz is just a drop in the bucket of the white supremacist. Okay, Her her heretical to anti-whiteism, right? People are not anti-white, so therefore you call it white supremacist. Any white people who are not anti-white, um, Cuerto is uh, it's lovely anti-white woman, uh, and that's what's objectionable about this author is that she's anti-white. But the propaganda found in Santa Cruz is just a drop in the bucket of white supremacist Everybody, if you were here earlier, what does white supremacist mean? Messaging that has been found in California for years, according to data on hate groups. So if you are white and not anti-white, anti-whites will refer to you as a hate group. And it comes as deep as a deeply divided county or country continues to grapple with racial with a racial divide only exacerbated by Donald Trump's presidency, one national expert says. Really, who are these experts? Anti-whites, of course. Well, well, they cite each other. Talk about incestuous. Still, in the wake of racist graffiti, I'm mean, talk about a third-rate typist. This Cuerto is a third-rate typist. This is, and this is supposed to be some sort of journalism. This is pure vitriolic anti-whiteism, pure hatred 
of white people, of Western civilization, of any white person who isn't anti-white. This woman, Isabella Cuerto, hates white people. Obviously. Obviously. There's no room, if you're a white person, for caring about white well-being. Because if you're not anti-white, well, then you're a hater, you're a white supremacist, you are... What are the other ones that she's already used? The racist graffiti being found in Santa Cruz just this week. Rocks. Now get this. The racist graffiti. Now remember, this is what the actual people are going to be picking up. What do you think and seeing? What do you think happens when a person, a vague, one of our brothers and sisters walking down the street, comes across an actual disgusting villainous flyer and then they read racist graffiti? Well, they're going to agree. But when they come across this, and then they see Cuerto, the anti-white, saying racist graffiti on rocks, what are they going to think? Bit of an IQ test, if you didn't immediately put those together. I mean, I can, I can only get it so close without doing it for you. Uh, still, in the wake of racist graffiti being found in Santa Cruz just this week, rocks with the words, no white guilt. Well, isn't that interesting? Painted on them, found in countywide, or found countywide, countywide in recent weeks and months. All right. So let's just take a quick look at what the readers are going to be reading briefly here. They're going to hear, they're going to read Cuerto, the third rate typist, talentless typist, saying racist graffiti. And then the words, no white guilt. How do you think your average white person is going to feel about the term, the, the words, no white guilt being defined by Cuerto as racist? They're going to think that Cuerto is garbage. They're going to side against Cuerto. Well, we want them to find us because we are love, hope, and redemption. Now, Cuerto then goes on to say, uh, and a swastika turning up in Boulder Creek. So someplace else. Last summer, some residents can't help but be unnerved. So Cuerto knows she has a weak argument. The talentless typist typing away knows she has a, a very weak argument because she's trying to call no white guilt evil. And white people are going to say, whoa, 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 whoa. That means I have to have white guilt. If that's evil, then good is for me to have white guilt. Do you see how this works? Oh, God, tear the heavens open and tell them all. Part the seas. I've already tried to walk on water and I know it doesn't work. So you're going to have to do something. Because if the anti-white, if people don't get that if the anti-whites call no white guilt evil and immoral, then that means the inverse is moral and good. And the inverse means that you average white people out there have to feel guilt. Thank you for revealing that, Cuerto. Thank you for revealing that to every person who reads. And every time this takes place, everybody is going to be reading it and they're going to be coming to the same conclusions. Every person, no matter how old or delirious or on the drugs that they are on, this the pharmaceutical drugs they're on or maybe tripping on something else that they just got a shot of or whatever it is, they're going to say, whoa, whoa, evil is not having white guilt? Evil is not having white guilt? Did I read that right? Let me go back. Let me go back and read that again. Because is evil having no white guilt? Then good means having white guilt. Well, screw this Cuerto and, and uh, these other anti-whites. I'm not going to have any white guilt. I've been working and paying my taxes my whole life. And who knows? Maybe this, maybe the particular white person that we are visualizing right now has a non-white in the family. Maybe they adopted a non-white children. Maybe they participated in uh, non-white in, uh, endeavors to improve the lives of non-white people. And then they're saying, screw that. I'm not going to be a part of any of that. I'm going to oppose these people. Who are these nowhitegilt.org people? I'm going to side with them. Thank you, Cuerto. And God for all of the rest of them that just out there who just, the white, they can't get it. I, I, I don't know what, I don't know what to say. 
I don't know what to say. You're going to have to just maybe do the noogie thing where you rub on the head, whatever you got to do to get them to understand. Because I can only make it so clear. I can only make it, I can only have so many victories so clear. I, I, this is so ridiculous. I look over here and I see, you know, the, the number of our champions is absolutely infinitesimal compared to these other channels you go to where they doom document, doom dissect, or they claim to have some sort of voting angle or they claim to, and they've got thousands and thousands and thousands pushing this feckless, ineffective garbage. Dear God in heaven, how many times do we have to succeed in the anti-white's own words? before folks catch on. Please rip the clouds apart. How much more obvious can it get? She has to actually read the talentless typist typing away. Cat urine stench probably, you know, fumigating the house. She's probably delirious on it as she types away. And she's, and cats are wonderful animals. And she's tab typing, but anti-whites aren't. She's typing away and she's, well, you know what? That actually, pff, that doesn't look very good. I'm going to throw in, wasn't there another, wasn't there some kind of swastika somewhere? Wasn't there somebody being a villain somewhere nearby? Oh yeah, Boulder Creek, year ago, maybe two years ago or whatever it was. Let me just, oh yeah, that did take place. Well, I'll just toss that in here. So to try to make my argument strong. Long time Capitola resident, Ruby Perry Swick said she was walking toward the Capitola village on February 4th when she found a small piece of white paper decorated with hearts and glitter. Hmm. This is in their, this is in the anti-white regime news. This is in their, this is their works. I want you all to really, this is in their works. Here, this is the, this is the, if you're not aware, if you haven't read this often enough, you haven't seen this sort of thing, this is where the talentless typist is becoming a fiction writer and uh, just pure fiction. And they're trying to set up that ominous scene, right? You know, it was dark that night. The howl of the wolf and the coyotes in the distance startled her from her inward contemplation. That's when she came upon the piece of paper with hearts and glitter. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. The message on it said, with the hearts and glitter, no white guilt. You know, scare music. Wee, 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 scare music. <laughs> with the hearts and glitter, it said, no white guilt. And included a link to a website and here's where she has to lie, folks. And this is where you get the smile. This is where you get the big smile. Because the talentless typist, high on cat urine, obviously went to knowwhyguilt.org. And she saw, oh my God, I can't tell people about this website. Oh my God, I'm just going to have to flat out lie about it. She is admitting to us. She is admitting it. And the people who go and they look up No White Guilt, who are wondering, well, what, what was on that site? The people who go and they look up, they're going to find the exact opposite of what she says here. Because she says, a website that embraces white supremacist ideology. Now, what does that tell us about Cuerto? It tells us that she's anti-white. It tells us that she wants to victimize Western kind. Because the only white people to Cuerto who are acceptable are anti-white white people, doesn't it? We know everything we need to know about Cuerto. She took a picture of the paper, a picture of the paper, ripped it up, and then threw it away. I wonder how many people got to that line and thought, why did she rip it up? It's got hearts and glitter and says no white girl. She took a picture of the paper, ripped it up, and threw it away. Quote, it worries me that there might be some more of these people then I realized around here, she told Lookout. No white guilt. And now here, here goes into, she. I'm just going to skip this for time. She goes into this nonsense about uh, the phrase no white guilt 
being used in the 1960s and in California uh, for uh, for different propositions that were put forward in the population. Now, remember, California used to be this nirvanic environment that was uh, uh, everyone in the world wanted to go there. The weather was great. The people were great. There was law and order. Everybody wanted to go there. Now it's hell. Now it's anti-white hell. And uh, at best, they might end up getting Jenner as a governor who will be anti-white in all ways except the economy. Might take away the COVID restrictions. Who knows? Uh, but that's where California has gone. And it is getting worse. And white people who are anti-white are fleeing California. White people who are also normal uh, are fleeing California. But the white anti-whites are going to Texas. They're going to Nevada. They're going to these different places. And what are they doing? They're voting anti-white policies into the places they've landed. Typical for scum like that, isn't it? That they would destroy a place like locusts and then leave and immediately begin doing what they did from the place they left. Uh, their right to vote in those places should be taken away for maybe a decade uh, so that uh, they can be acclimated to the new environment. Uh, you're going to come into this state and uh, you're going to immediately begin voting to destroy this, to remake Texas, or Nevada, Arizona, and what was the other state they're moving to, and immediately begin remaking it into California? No, thank you. But California used to be this beautiful place. And this author, this author, this talentless typist, uh, with the with the uh, noxious, mephetic aromas, malodorous aroma of cat urine wafting through the air and other litter box treats wafting through the air and typing away in her absolute hatred for Western kind and Western. You know, you can feel it's visceral in this. She says, well, the people of California, they uh, tried using the phrase no white guilt back in the 60s and to try to stop some of these propositions and things that anti-whites were bringing forward. I have never uh, heard of no white guilt being used anywhere before. Maybe this is true. Just because I researched I researched uh, anti-white and anti-whiteism uh, in the dictionary, in the dictionary, the city library, and they weren't there. Uh, so it's not impossible that somewhere else somebody uh, tried, hey, we're not going to have white guilt uh, and remake our city into some sort of hellhole uh, for you anti-whites because you think we should have white guilt. Uh, it's not impossible. But what they want to say, of course, is that those efforts were evil because those efforts were geared toward th those white people maintaining what? The civilization they built, maintaining the norms that they engender maintaining the businesses and the government entities, the law and order, the way they made those things. And to Cuerto, that's evil. For white people to want to preserve what they have created, that's evil. Let that also be a message to you about how much Cuerto hates white people, about how anti-white this woman is. She is revealing it line after line. All right. So then we go down a little bit more. And then, of course, once again, two years ago and now today, the website on the No White Guilt Rocks, and she's doing her very best to not write nowhitegilt.org, and flyers found here is run by a podcast host and video blogger whose work has been mentioned. Now, okay, I'm gonna stop right there. You know very well, as do I, that she has watched uh, my uh, work. She has seen me on video. And one of two things has happened. They're probably both. She, she vehemently hates me and wants desperately to be in a relationship with me. I mean, that's where, it, come on, let's just be serious. She vehemently hates me and thinks, oh, God, I'd like to marry him, at least for the night. Uh, so while feeling this and hearing what I have to say, Look what she then reveals. And then let me ask you again, what direction is the right direction? What direction should we go to recapture our destiny? With the truth that is in our hearts? With love, hope, and redemption? With wanting everyone of all immutable characteristics to help us knock down anti-whiteism before it destroys America and England and Canada and Australia and et cetera for all of us? 
Is that what she wants to reveal? No. She says this. The website is run by a podcast host and video blogger. She's not giving my name. Wonder why. Whose work has been mentioned by former Ku Klux Klan grand wizard, David Duke. So, do we go with love? Who we really are? Or do we go with a villainy role that merely, uh, that allows these anti-white talents typists to just merely cite the things that these people say? Which direction? Which way, Western man? Which way, Western man? Despite liberal reputation, County not immune to hateful messaging. And she's finger wagging. Everybody bend a knee to Cuerto finger wagging. Well, if you're white, at least, right? The first time the Black Lives Matter activist, Bella, I'm going to guess that her name is pronounced Bonner, but she could also pronounce it Boner uh, if... I were to imagine that there was another vowel. So Boner uh, learned of rocks painted with the words, no white guilt. And she always puts it in quote, no white guilt. So scary. So Boner learned of rocks painted with the words, no white guilt. I'll just stick with Bonner. I don't see another. I mean, my vision, eh, it can go a little wacky, but. So Bonner learned of the rocks painted with the words, no white guilt on them. Uh, was in September, around the time that the Black Surf Club that she helped organize kicked off in Santa Cruz. Well, remember, this is a Black Lives Matter activist, and that is being reported here by this Cuerto report, type it by her. And uh, so this person, uh, what do we know about that? It means that uh, white people are evil, right? Somebody made lives not value. Who are the people that made? So there's a premise there that if you accept that statement, you are the villain. That's why you can't be in their story. That's why you don't flip it. It's why you don't flip it, right? So this activist, this anti-white activist, translate it so you know what you're talking about. And of course, I am sure there are uh, honest and good-hearted people in the Black Lives Matter movement that just want to do good for black people and don't want to harm anybody else and more power to them. But uh, we've seen quite a few who chant other things, say other things, have other posters. And Bella might not be one of them here. Bonner might not be one of them. But she does say that she started this black surf club, I guess, in September. And that's when she heard of the no white guilt. Well, I would think that this uh, Bonner would be would be good with the no white guilt, right? Because she doesn't want to, right? It's, I guess, supposedly she doesn't want to white guilt white people. Isn't that right? Or is she revealing that that's exactly what she wants to do? And they show this picture of her and she's a lovely, innocent looking little uh, non-white woman. I, I, is she supposed to be black? She doesn't look black to me, uh, but maybe she, maybe she identifies as black. Maybe she's another one of those not quite black, but identifies as, why is it so many of the leaders in that movement don't look are, are not as black as as black people can be i mean why do black people put up with that i wonder but anyhow uh maybe she identifies as black but uh, she definitely is a a a polite uh inoffensive looking young lady they make sure to put her picture because she's very innocent looking and uh, wouldn't hurt a fly she just wants to have the the black surf shop cool good good uh, good on you have your black surf shop do you i mean blacks only right uh i i know you would be cool with it being the other direction we we're not i'm not suggesting that but that's kind of an interesting position to have isn't it we can have this is the innocent person who is objecting to white people saying that they don't want to have white guilt and has the black surf shop the black surf club that's a come on there cuerto uh, this you're you're you really run off the road here. You really run off the road. All four tires are flat. Uh, you stop crying. Stop crying, Cuerto. Uh, all the tires are flat. Just stop. Call AAA. And some, uh, I don't know, probably men will show up to save you. And they'll probably be white. Uh, so it says here that she saw the no white guilt. Uh, and uh, around the time, the black surf shop 
that she helped organize kicked off in Santa Cruz. The group of surfers had gathered for a photo to commemorate the day. Later that week, Bonner received a message alerting her to pictures and video of multiple rocks with the no white guilt message in the same area where the black surfers had taken their photos. Wow. Wow. Of course, then immediately Bonner said, yeah, that's cool. Uh, white people shouldn't have white guilt. Why should they? No, actually, she didn't say that. Actually, uh, she thinks it's some kind of horrifying thing for white people to not want to have white guilt. Hmm. Again, revealing. God, if, if, uh, what else can I do? What else can I do? What else can I do? Seriously. Can I have some lightning? The person who sent the message had been walking on East Cliff Drive, collecting the rocks and throwing them in the trash, Bonner said. So some vicious anti-white was walking along, collecting the, these works of art so that white people won't find them and then decide, I don't, have, I don't want to have any white guilt. What are you talking about? This person is, my, my God, we definitely don't want white people seeing this. And then this person reached out to this Bonner, knowing that she she organized, helped to organize the Black Surfer Club, Black Surfer Club, just for the non-white people, just the black non-white people. Uh, and nothing nothing odd about that at all in, in their claims about wanting everything to just be equal. And maybe they're lying. Hmm. And then said... Wow, I found some, so no no evidence. Who is this person that was doing this? No evidence that these were placed where there were surfers. And even if they did, even if they were placed where they had their group photo on their inaugural day, how would the person placing these beautiful works of art even know that? How would the person even know? But of course, the talentless typist, you know, accidentally... Oh boy, I won't make that joke. <laughs> I won't make that joke. But the talentless typist Cuerto is really reaching here and white readers are going to be able to tell. They're really going to be able to tell. She says months later, months later, months later, Bonner saw a rock for herself. Things are getting bad in Santa Cruz, I can tell you. I mean, wow probably on the verge of just disappearing from reality. She is also aware of sightings. She is also aware of sightings. Now, you'll have to bear with me because I didn't get an opportunity to go through this. I just very skimmed, I just skimmed it. This is comical. This is absolutely self-parodic. It is ridiculous. I mean, I really feel like, let me make sure I can touch the mic and not actually throw electric. God might. Okay, I got to I gotta do this just right. I, I got to do justice to the talentless typists that we're discussing here. Where did my article go? Okay, here we go. So, get this. Months later, Bonner saw a rock for herself. She is also aware of sightings around pleasure point and east side santa cruz the santa cruz police department said in an email statement that no such incidents have been reported to the agency but quote if you really look they're around they'll be in the landscaping bonner said uh, this is so terrifying. My skin is crawling with fear. I'm about to crawl out of my skin. I might turn inside out. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with this? I am absolutely terrified that white people don't want to have white guilt. Hateful speech. Uh, and, and if you could really see this, this, this little girl, Bonner, uh, it's sad. You, she should be, you should be, Bonner, you should be a normal person. Stop hating white people. Come on. Come on, stop hating white people. Stand with us. Stand against anti-whiteism. White people should not have to be, they should not have to feel white guilt. Stop it. Stop it. And maybe stop pretending also that you're black. 
stop. Although maybe you are black. I don't know. Uh, she goes on to say here, hateful speech in Santa Cruz isn't new to Bonner. Oh, no. I'm sure Bonner, Bonner, as part of the BLM movement, has many examples. She got her start in, as an activist organizer in 2011 after a series of racist graffiti incidents at uh, Soquel High School, where she was a uh, sophomore. So she has been active as an anti-white activist since being a sophomore in high school. Now, to see white supremacist messages on rocks so close to where she and other surfers gathered? It's disconcerting. Sometimes black self surf club members get weird looks. Just for being in the water, she said. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, I got to pull it together. This is, this is really challenging. This is really challenging. Cuerto, boy, you have, you, you and Bonner are quite the team. I must say, you and Bonner are quite the team. Quote, sometimes it's just really sad to realize how deep the anti-blackness goes. I mean, white people don't want to have white guilt. Continuing with her quote, they really don't want to see joy. She said, most times I'm like, just let us be. Oh. Okay. Propaganda on the rise, both nationally and statewide. Propaganda is a common tactic used by hate groups to, quote, maximize media and online attention while limiting the risk of individual exposure, negative media coverage, and arrests and public, and public backlash that often accompany more public events, close quote, according to the Anti-Defamation League Center on Extremism. You know what I wonder? I want to see how you how you how you get those two uh, positions, the uh, people who don't want to feel white guilt uh, have to be in the shadows, how you get that to comport with the anti-white narratives, white people run everything for white people. Come on, ADL, give it a go. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, it couldn't be that you are lying, could it? It couldn't be that you're anti-white, could it? I think it is. The center found the center found a near doubling, a near doubling of white supremacist propaganda nationwide between 2019 and 2020, from 2,724 reported cases to in 2019 to 5,125 the following year. So white people saying they don't want to have white guilt, saying you want to go free, hate crime. The That increase marked, you know right now, you know, oh my God, we're running out. I got to get calls. Let me know if you got, if you want to talk, you write me or you're not going to get called. I know tall Kevin wants to talk. So Kevin, write me so that you're at the top of, so that you're on there. I can see where you are. I can call you. Uh, let's, let's just jump through this. Then the increase mark, the highest levels. Okay. Yada, uh, the barrage of propaganda, which overwhelmingly featured veiled whites. Okay. M more Bravo Sierra. Oh my God. This is just so ridiculous. Uh, uh white supremacist propaganda found at, uh, uh, what is it? You have the two L's in it, but it's Spanish, right? So how do you pronounce that? Um, I don't think you say the else. Cab Cabrero College, uh, according to Center and an Extremism Database. Okay, yada. Uh, let's see, groups, uh, efforts, UCL research, UCLA researchers. Uh, there's been especially dramatic uptick in violence. Okay, this is this is important to read here. Listen to how slimy Cuerto is. She says there has been now talking about all of this increase in hate and increase in white supremacy, all these anti-white slurs. She then, for evidence of it, says there has been an increase, a, an especially dramatic uptick in violence against 
Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the United States since the start of the pandemic. In the wake of the March 16 murder of eight people, most of them Asian American women in Atlanta, many AAPI residents of Santa Cruz have reflected on the racism they've endured here. So this is a this is a vile, disgusting, wretched anti-white, this Cuerto. She knows exactly what she's, she knows it's not white people attacking a, those all those Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. That is disgusting. You are wretched. You are a disgusting anti-white human being. Cuerto, you are disgusting. With all your talentless typing, you know exactly what you're doing there. You know that wasn't white people. Uh, let's see. Let's jump down last summer. Okay. Again, they're talking about she returns to the swastika. Uh, town's over or whatever it is. So when you don't have enough uh, anti-white, these hate hoaxes, then just use the same one repeatedly in the same article. I mean, when you're that talentless at typing, that's what you do. Statewide, there are reports of hateful propaganda to pro Ku Klux Klan flyers. You mean the government uh, have been spotted in Newport Beach following reports that the uh, white supremacist march Okay, well, this is just all garbage. And uh, let's see, the Capitola police chief, and here's where you have the, oh, they're going to investigate. Uh, but of course, there's nobody to arrest uh, because nobody's done anything illegal that they're saying. It makes people question whether our community is someplace safe to be. Okay, whatever. Uh, white people not wanting to have white guilt. Uh, if, if that's making, if that's causing people to wonder if it's a safe place to be, they are revealing that they're vehemently anti-white. They are the problem, them. Not the white people who don't want to feel white guilt, the white people who want to go free. They're not the problem. The people who want white people to feel white guilt, they are the problem. I think Cuerto needs an exorcist. That's what I think. I think the demons need to be taken out of her. Maybe down on one of those islands, you know, where they do the thing and they, they, they go into the stomach and they pull the chicken entrails out and they blow smoke on you. That's probably what she needs. Uh, let's see. More connections, county. Of, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to return. Maybe more of this is really funny. And uh, maybe I'll send the picture of this uh, Isabella Cuerto to one of our meme merchants. And we're going to have to maybe make a meme out of her because she's not, a, she's not an ugly, look, she's not a horrible looking woman by any means. And she wouldn't say the same thing about, I don't know how many fantasies she's had, but she wouldn't say the same thing about me. But, uh, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't leave her in charge of, you know, after reading this, uh, I wouldn't leave her in charge of uh, I don't know, cleaning toilets or anything like that. I mean, she's really maybe the maybe the litter box she can get to. Hey, let's jump on over really quickly. No, we're going to have a giant celebration in the name of Cuerto, in the name of uh, Bonner. We are going to do this first last financially gifted $1,000 to white well-being. Everybody, giant, raucous round of applause for first, last. I hope he's still with us. He financially gifted $1,000 to white well-being. And I, for him, I'm going to say he's doing it in the names of Cuerto and Bonner. Thank you both. $1,000 US dollars in your names you two lovely women, you anti-white lovely women in your name. You know what? This is the third thousand dollars that First Last has financially gifted to white well-being. The first represented a financial gift for two years ago that he gave just recently. The second was a financial gift he gave just recently that uh, was uh, to be for last year. And this third one thousand dollars is the financial gift for 2021 this year. My heart goes out to you, brother. Thank you all the more for naming Bonner and Cuerto in this $1,000 financial gift to yours truly so that I can serve white well-being with every dollar and Cuerto and Bonner can go insane with rage. Think about how they're screaming right now. Think of the suffering of their cats. They're going to take it out on something. And I'm going to bet the cats are the only things that can't get away from them. God bless you, brother. Next week, we're going to be back. First Last is working on the next anthem. I didn't have time to look at all of the 
uh, instructions that he gave me to give to all of you. But I will get all of that information together for next week. We're going to get a number of songwriters that will be able to see the rhythm and they will all be able to have a look. They'll all be able to give some suggestions and everybody that's interested in doing it because we're going to get a, a magnificent set of lyrics going forward on another masterful on another masterful anthem that this hero of Western kind is putting together will be known for all time, a, a, a certified genius, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we are going to work with him, a collaboration for the ages. Another anthem going to be made by First Last. We'll have all the details for you that next week. But $1,000 financial gift coming in from this champion in the name of those anti-white losers. God bless you, brother, and a big salute to you. You know you, I love you for every single cent and, and cent and more. Reptile wrote to us. He's, he wrote, I, uh, I've shared Jason's stream on Jeffrey Doherty's channel. I was interviewed by Jeffrey Doherty. I've shared J Jason's stream from Jeffrey Doherty's channel with so many folks, writes Reptile, and the amount of positive feedback has been astounding. The overwhelming sentiment was, Finally, in all caps, someone speaking on our behalf in a way that comports with their morality. Please, all caps, like and share that video. It has been effective. It has been more effective than anything else I have tried, writes Reptile, and he is at it, folks. He makes it happen. He's one of our great champions. His name is in the Hall of Heroes. He's making it happen. Reptile. And he says about that interview that I did on Jeffrey Doherty's show, he says, it has been the most effective thing, more effective than anything else he's tried. Each recipient that he has sent this to was so captivated, they watched it in its entirety, the entire interview. Many people, by the way, are saying that that was my best interview ever. Uh, many are now, writes Reptile, even sharing and spreading this video themselves. That's Reptile, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure, make sure that you heed those wise words. God bless you, Reptile. Thank you for everything you're doing. We've got two from Ruination Media, and we're going to get to the calls. Ruination writes, I am noticing more and more anti-whites using the term non-black. I'm convinced they are using it because they saw many of our guys using the term non-white. The ironic thing is anti-whites are faster to re recognize the power of your verbiage, Jason, than the ant gnats are. But the anti-whites screwed it up. They are using the term non-black disparagingly, which could alienate their non-white allies. Maybe they will start calling us non-brown, which sounds pretty funny to me. Either way, writes the sagacious, the brilliant, lovely porridge, ruination media. Either way, we win. A absolutely. <clears throat> and anti-whites, they pick up the verbiage that's powerful far faster all the time. We're correcting that here. We're not like the rest of the white sympathetic spheres that just keep bit hitting their head against the wall. Why doesn't it work? Because you're an idiot. That's why it doesn't work. You've got to stop sticking to these things that don't work. Uh, and yes, when we say non-white, it is the exact opposite of when they say people of color. Uh, when they say people of color, they are excluding us from humanity. When we say non-white, we're just distinguishing between people who are white and people who are not white. There's nothing offensive or disparaging about it at all. Ruination writes on, I was sure Zimmerman would be found guilty because the judge was clearly corrupt and banned phone evidence, claiming Trayvon's phone might have been hacked by uh, white people trying to frame him. But the jury knew better. Anti-whites have since ensured there wouldn't be a repeat. This time they made it heretical to even question the events of a, of a recent trial. I won't say the name because the ear is against the door. This time they made it heretical, he says. They fixed the loophole by making it impossible to find the facts and making it a sin, a sin, immoral to even look. This was a very public trial, but how many anti-white show trials are we not aware of? Brilliantly said there, lovely porridge. This was a very public trial. He writes, white people have to stop throwing each other under the bus, hoping that the mob won't come for them next. Brilliantly said, brother. A great champion, lovely porridge, a deep thinker. This is a worldwide movement. 
no white guilt, going free, serving white well-being. It is a worldwide movement. That genius is down in Australia, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you follow him at, Ru at Ruination Media. Follow everybody that we're talking about here that is doing great works. And let's see who we have. Uh, the only one that I see of that has made themselves known available is Tall Kevin. So we will get to him first. And if any of the others who were in line before him are here, they need to write me and let me know on Skype and then I will come back to your call. So we're going to call you right now, Tall Kevin. Get ready for the call to be placed. Let me just turn this down so I don't blow the speakers out. There he is, brother. How you doing? Hey, good. How about you? Oh, beautiful. After reading that article, I couldn't be happier. Yeah, I was getting some laughs. I was getting some laughs out of it. That was, the, <laughs> that was you couldn't make it up. It was just I know. funny names. And, Tell us about oh, your success, yeah, brother. Funny. Well, just uh, like bringing up the, the lexicon and, and, you know, the words and everything that we talk about is it, it, it makes sense when I do it. Like kind of like piecemeal, where I'll do it like odds and ends, and it's kind of hard to somehow have like a full-on conversation with someone that you just you know you just met in public. Mm -hmm. And I'll do it like off and on, you know, back and forth. But where I work, it's possible to do it like an extended, uh, like an extended time. It's not where like there's no real issues to worry about, like discipline or anything like that. It's not the type of job where that's a problem. But the people that I come across is mainly older. Older men, well, yeah, I was all oh, 99% not men, and they're kind of even if they're not older though, they're still stuck in the mindset of like conservatism, and it's not about it's not about race, and you're making it worse. They just want to divide us, and it's about the the Constitution and the George Washington and you know apple pie and things like that. And I'll I'll try and kind of keep myself from going to you know like Aunt Nat type stuff, but some some of it I'll I'll bring up a little bit like. Just to give a historical like precedent to say, well, you know, the country of Liberia had the same constitution that the United States did back in 18 whatever when they made it, and it's obviously different. And then you know, talking about what they said in the in the uh, the Bill of Rights and all that things from you know years ago. I'm sure you know what I mean. But saying like, well, the true conservative is one that you're worshiping. They wrote these words years ago, and they made it obvious what it was about. And it's not like that's ever going to come back. But I mean. They knew that race played a part in, in certain governing systems. And if you remove that people, then it's not the same. So I'm trying to tie it in to say, well, Westmen create Western kind. Like that, that's basically it. And they still just kind of like, I don't know, blow it off. And I'm like you said yourself, like they're making it about race, like with all the MLB and everything, it's obvious. And you've said this words before. I, I told to them as well that it's been about race before you were born. So it's time to wake up and this is what it's about. And like, I just don't know how to con like counter other than just saying, ah, whatever, you, you don't even, you don't care. You're just, like I said, like a cuck servant type guy and not like you're blowing them off, but it's just some people that I think they're just so set in that mindset and they don't want to wake up to the reality that they were so wrong for so many years that they just, they'll, they'll shut you out and freeze you out and they won't want to talk to you about it because for them to realize like, hey, you actually kind of make some sense. Their whole ideology is somewhat like, flawed you know that they've believed in for so many years so that, that that's kind of what i was saying is like an unintended consequence to think like oh this is just you know he's just making it about race and i'm thinking i'm, I'm just giving you <laughs> odds and ends piecemeal you know what it's about and they just can't get it so how would you counter that that type of situation well this is a great question because a lot of people are going to be uh, in experiencing this uh and this is one of the reasons why I, I intend to, uh, I guess it's right now, just so everybody, I'll, I'll, I'll surprise everyone with the little piece of news is I'm making a new intro and uh, it's going to be, I think, a, a bit more accommodating to a lot of these uh, conservative types, uh, Republican types, uh, so that they won't be, they won't be as nervous, speaking of maybe I think to a little bit of their concerns. Uh, because they believe where they are is as far as you can go in the anti-white narrative. And then if you take any step further, then uh, they know that they're going to be attacked by 
the anti-whites and they don't want to do that. Uh, but they don't realize that the, the next step is not in that dimension. Like going back to the example of the Flatlanders versus the 3D, uh, the next step, if you are in that dimension, if you're in that story, the next step is to something like uh, playing the villain. Uh, but for us, the next step is off the pages of that script into the three-dimensional world of our own story. And uh, where I've been talking about it the entire stream, been talking about it for two decades, where we are advancing the love, hope, and redemption of service to white well-being. Now, when it comes to, and what I want to say is, once I'm done with this uh, this new intro and we wrap up the, the second iteration of the second edition of Go Free, I really want to start, well, maybe not, maybe at least this, this pass back and forth between me and the, uh, the editors. I really want to start going on, going rolling live, uh, roll in, going freeze live and pull up different Doom Documenter websites uh, who are live as well or channels who are live and then critique them and speak to what the person is saying to everybody who will bother to watch uh, what I am saying. And hopefully we can get a lot of their people to come over to hear a critique of the person they normally listen to and love. And I will do it in a way that uh, would answer some of these questions you're asking right here, uh, because these are relevant things. And this, these are the vast majority of people we're going to end up speaking to. When you are confronted with somebody, brother, who is, uh, who's of this mindset, and it's really, I, I got to tell you, I, I, over the years, I have waxed and waned between just telling these people what I really think about them, uh, which is <laughs> most unlovely and ineffective. Uh, and I know you felt it. I know a lot of people feel it. We just want to yeah, say you think it. Yeah. It's kind of like they, they understand they're on our side, you know, when it comes to the big picture and when they still just don't get it, you're thinking like, you just want to shake the guy and be like, dude, what, what is wrong with you? Is there something wrong? Like, <laughs> you know, like it's kind of like, like, like Rush Limbaugh type mentality where they come right, right close to the edge of it. And then they'll just turn right around, you know, like right when they're about to say, Oh, it's about white people. And it's like, well, it's about the conservative values oh, or the, yeah. the constitution. I'm like, Oh man, I, I'm out of here. You know, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I think? Somewhat, it might just be intellectual cowardice. They're not; a, they don't want to say it, and they don't want to open that whole doorway up, or they just—they really don't get it. I don't know what one it is. No, it's the cowardice. They know what's going yeah. on. They are—they're they're clearly aware of what's taking place, and they are afraid of the consequence. This is the, the this is what I was just mentioning. They think the next step is into villainy, and that's what yeah. we have to communicate to them—that the next step isn't into villainy. So, uh, depending on the person, there are different approaches, and you're going to feel out the specific person and and then use what uh, it will be best suited to them. Let's say it's a, a, a military type of guy, a tough kind of guy, retired, he was in the military, he was tough or or he was a construction worker or he's got a lot of bravado, whatever it is. It is very effective to say to an individual like that, hey, don't, don't be such a coward. Come on, don't be so afraid of reality. Don't be such a coward. You know, that's just coward. You know what's going on. I know what's going on. Don't be, and you say it in the way guys can say it to each other. Yeah. And like, look, I know that you actually know you're just being you're just being afraid. Don't be so don't be such a coward. Uh, we both know what's actually going on. And uh, but give them give them space you know, after saying something like that. So when they come away from the conversations, you're saying something like this or, or things that you've already said. Trust me that they are mulling these things and they're thinking, yeah, yeah. And if you are saying things that will provide them the skeleton keys on their own, now remember, when it comes to mankind, plenty have said that you, you can't teach a man anything. He's got to find it out for himself. So if you provide the skeleton keys after conversation after conversation, uh, and even if an individual is putting up this, this defense, remember, some of the strongest defense will come out when they're being persuaded <clears throat> because they, they're, they're afraid to be persuaded. So that's when you'll see a lot of the pushback. But... They'll be thinking yeah, that, about that, that would work great, like you just said that with cars, because I kind of a lot of men like that, and that 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 should work. I'll just say that, like you know, don't be afraid. I mean, you know, don't. pick your side. I mean, what's it about, you know? And right, uh, I don't want to take up too much time, but like some small things, like I think some people are not like I'm, you know, Amish and I'm hundred percent, you know, committed to certain things like that type of dedication, but. Everyone saw weeks ago about Coca-Cola, about that product. I never drink it. I mean, something like as small as that. And these guys are complaining about it. They'll put Twitter and Facebook, all the same memes and stupid things. But then you'll turn around, you'll see them drinking it. And I'm thinking, like, 
don't you get any type of like moral or personal victory just not drinking that stuff after you've seen what they did? Even though if you're only giving them a dollar or two, because you'll approach them like, oh, you still drink that? Geez. And it's like, well, well, I'm not going to bankrupt the country or the company by not drinking a big deal. And I'm thinking like, oh, you're giving the money. But then again, you're going to put memes and crap on online. And like, yeah. what's, like what's the purpose? You know, yeah, it's not like. That, that, you know, that, like you got, you, you got to live, talk, talk what you, you know, talk, walk the walk, talk the talk. You got to do some things in your life, like not doing that. I mean, something as simple as that. I mean, that kind of just gets frustrating as well. It does get frustrating. Yeah. I mean, it's, it just reminds me of people who are uh, very overweight and uh, I've worked with guys, something I've observed in, in construction, very overweight for lunch, order themselves a whole pizza and then a double big gulp of Diet Coke. The yeah. diet is doing nothing. The diet part of that Diet Coke is doing, it's very silly. Here's the other thing I would recommend too. And this is for different personalities. When you come across these people who are very afraid is, so there are three things here. The first is if you're just providing lexicon words and dialectics arguments, even if they're pushing back and saying, oh, it's not about race, like Tucker Carlson, and I've mocked him saying that you know, they'll be murdering his family and they'll be saying uh, we're killing you because you're white. And Tucker will still be saying it's not about race. So but even if they're like this, if you're providing them the verbiage and dialectics, they'll be mulling that. And when they realize that you're giving them a way out of that coffin, they'll end up taking it. So over time, you, will, you have the second strategy, depending on the kind of guy it is, where you say, come on, man, don't don't be so afraid. You know, we all know what the, what's going on in the world. I'm not going to go tell everybody that you know what's going on in the world, but we all know. Don't be don't be chicken. Don't be a wimp. Don't be a coward. And and, and then just kind of drop it. Uh, you can play on people like that. The third way that I'll suggest to you, brother, is to say, uh, yes, let's make this not about race. So let's put an end to all of this anti-whiteism. Let's everybody of all races get together and say no more anti-whiteism. Because clearly what Coke was doing was anti-white. Clearly what this is doing is anti-white. So let's everybody get together and let's put an end to this being about race by putting an end to anti-whiteism. And there is no way that a person can logically or rationally or in a mature way argue against that who is claiming that it's not about race. You are saying in that position, let's, let's put an end to it being about race. I can cite Coca-Cola. I can cite this. I can cite that. So let's put an end to it being that way by all of us, everybody. So don't be afraid there, uh, old man, young man, middle-aged man, wherever you are. Don't be afraid. Everybody's invited to put an end to anti-whiteism. Uh, so this is you don't have to you don't have to get a banner from some other period in history. That's not the next step here. The next step is for all of us to come together and say enough is enough with the anti-white. We're not. And I've, I've uh, Kevin, I've brought over a slew of people over the years that were conservative minded, Republican minded, libertarian minded by saying, let's get everybody of every race, of every religion, let's get them all together and let's all say no more anti-white. We already have, you can't be legally or otherwise against any of the other races. It's, there are already walls, laws, et cetera. Nobody can, whole businesses are shut. No, you can't even hint, you can't even, you can be targeted and socially lynched for having done nothing. And it happens all the time in this country. If this the presumed victim is non-white, that never happens with the white race. So you can I say to these people, let's just toss white people into that as well to say, no, nope, can't be anti-white either. And in all of these cases where the people were being honest, you got to be careful because some folks you might talk to are actually anti-white or uh, it, when it comes to men, it's very sad in the West, but they might not be anti-white, but the wife is, and they, yeah. she's the master, and they're very afraid of her. So uh, they will put up a front that, no, no, and even even when you even when you construct a beautiful argument like this, okay, everybody, it's already illegal and immoral to be anti anybody else. So let's add white people to the mix, and we'll put an end to it. Uh, even then, those kind of people will still say, no, 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 it's not about race, because all they're worried about is the uh, the uh, henpecker that's just going to go nuts, and she's and, and she's going to scream and throw adult tantrums uh, and make his life miserable. So 
when you come upon somebody like that, you got to let them go. I mean, you probably heard the story where the guy at the gym many, many years ago, he was like this, this, this superhuman, uh, like six, six or whatever he was. And he had muscles on muscles on muscles. And he was just magnificent, a magnificent specimen of our people. And he had this, uh, big blonde hair and, uh, and, and not only was he, did he look uh, fantastic, his physique was fantastic, but he was str almost strong like a power lifter. So you know the difference between bodybuilding and power lifting. This guy was almost strong like a power lifter. Yeah. I was very impressed with this guy. Bright blue eye, beautiful specimen. And of course, beautiful specimens of all hair colors, eye colors, skin, everything in, in our people. But this guy was a beautiful specimen. And uh, he would not participate in the end because his like four and a half foot tall, uh, 80 pound wife said, oh Pretty no, good. I think it's some kind of, so you just drop them. You just trust. So you come upon well, somebody like that, you drop them, you move on. But these other guys, brother, you're doing great work and we love you and I your family. I, not trying to interrupt, but no. I, I do kind of have, I think I have, a, I have a question, but I kind of have somewhat of an answer to it on my own. And this is the last thing because I know other people want to get on, but I think some men they want to they don't want to feel like they're playing into the whole like oh I'm a snowflake or I'm I'm offended by everything when I tell them hey this is going on against Western kind this is going against white people this is anti white anti white here there there and it's all you know true and then they think oh I'll, like I said like they're feeding into the, um, the the snowflake type behavior where they're offended by everything and they just take it on the chin they think like that's normal you know kind of like like you said like if I you know, military type lifestyle where you get hurt, just, you know, suck it up where they take that into their mindset. It's their everyday life that you can watch a cartoon or a TV show, you know, the Simpsons making fun of the, 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 the hillbilly guy, I forget his name, but they think that's funny and that's okay. Where if I told them like, Hey man, that guy is, is you in a caricature and they're making fun of you. They're, they're, they're making you look silly. And it also translates into children. Like that's how I'll bring it around and say, okay, you may not be offended by it, but a child seeing that as, you know, your five-year-old, 10-year-old, whatever, son or daughter, they're going to be taught and indoctrinated that that's okay to be laughed at and it's okay to be made fun of because you're not smart. So I kind of tie that into that, that issue to bring up awareness of being like um, victimized. Mm -hmm. But do you have any other tips on how to like tell them like, hey, it's okay to, to hurt or to cry. I mean, not, you know, physically, but just to say like, Hey, you, you, we are being victimized here. It's, it's okay to point it out. You're not being a snowflake or whatever they, that's old meme type culture that they talk about, you know? Well, precisely. And you're on to the exact uh, correct path. And what it, the note I wrote to myself exactly as you brought it up was women, children, elderly, the, yeah, like, like, that's the thing. I'll bring it up to them. Like, of course, you know, I, I used like you played football and I did it in high school as well. You know, you, you stub your finger or whatever, you keep going. But some guys, they, they like I said, they bring that to their whole lifestyle where, oh, I, you know, I have a fever. I don't I'm not going to call off of work because, you know, I just don't want to. And then they'll go to work and, you know, they're just detrimenting, you know, hurting themselves. And like I said, that translates, that bleeds into their life where they'll watch, yes, you know, movies and listen to country music. You know, that's always that's a big common thing around that and, and to listen to these songs and i try to explain to some of these guys like the brad paisley had a song where some burning across or somebody's yard i'm thinking like dude this guy is anti-white he's a he's a, he's an idiot like some of the songs are funny and whatever but he's glorifying drinking like for i mean country music's always done that but he's doing it in a negative way and like i said the one song that he had and i'm thinking like you're you're gonna patronize this guy, this guy because i don't know you just you're used to it so i think like I said, they carry that through their whole life where they think it's normal to, to hurt and to have a pain and everything. Where it's somewhat it is, you know, it's regular man, uh, lifestyle of a man, but it also comes down to, you know, your your self esteem and your your just your motivation. It's not okay. So I'm glad you agree with me in bringing it up to, like I said, children, elderly, and women, or you know, people that are handicapped in any other way, because they might not feel the same. So that, that's kind of what I'll do. Do it. That's exactly it, brother. I've done it many times. It's succeeded many times. Some men, you're going to be able to say, you're going to be able to reason with them. You're going to be able to say, hey, uh, it, it is it is ignorant to not acknowledge the harm that's being inflicted on our people, even if you think you can take it. Some you'll be able to uh, to to uh, break it down for them like that, and and they'll get it. Uh, and and talk about the fact that hey, we should be talking about the victimization 
because it's real, it's happening. You, you only should ignore uh, the, the claims of victimization when they are false. It's, it's only snowflakery when it's, when it's false or when it's magnified uh, more than uh, the, the, even if there is an offense, it's magnified into an offense. But then there are the others who are, they are, as you, as you've noted, you've come across plenty. I have it too, where they say, no, it's, it is, it's showing weakness. It's immoral to ever, uh, dim or, or to ever speak to any injury. You just exactly, as you said, you've got to take it on the chin. And, and because if you don't take it on the chin, uh, then you're showing weakness. And that's what you never want to show. You never show weakness as a hyper individualized idiot. And so, I immediately say, really, so I'm glad you can take it. But you know who can't take it? The little white babies, they can't take it. So is it moral for you to just watch? the? You can handle the pressure. You can handle the victimization. And is it moral for you? Is it a good thing for you? Is it an upstanding? Is it what a man does to watch the children suffer what you're able to physically and emotionally take, to watch the women suffer what you are physically and emotionally able to take, to watch the elderly or the sick of our people take what you are able. No, it's pretty despicable. And you will find that these guys in an instant are, are absolutely, because now you have the, are you not going to answer the call of the defense of our weakest members? And they immediately, that is a deep uh, value of our people. They immediately say, screw that. I'm going to run straight to the front line and I'm going to defend these people. So they go from one minute saying, oh no, you cannot ever mention the victimization of our people because it shows weakness. I'm going to be tough to the very next minute saying, uh-uh, I'm getting between our children, women, and elderly right now. Uh, and it is a marvelous transformation when you get these people to do that. And everyone, please do that. Everybody talk about it. Let's keep this conversation going. And a big round of applause to Tall Kevin for calling in and, and sharing these with us and, and his ideas and these questions and for all the success he's having in advancing white well-being. Any final words, brother, before we let you go? Um, on Twitter, I sent you a message. I just made some signs, and I could, okay. I do every once in a while. I also found a nice website to make like stickers. They're pretty cheap. I believe I told you guys or somebody before, but it's on the uh, message there. But I mean, people can go out and do it. Just Google make your own stickers or whatever on, on Yahoo or whatever, and it comes up. It's real cheap to do. Just like um, whoever is doing in California, you can paint your own rocks. I mean, just small things like that. I mean, look how I was laughing before when you were <laughs> reading that story, just how silly it was. I mean, it, it's like a domino effect. She she makes these, or whoever did it, whoever makes the rocks, and, you know, the story comes out, and then you cover the story, the kind of you know, morale booster. I mean, that, that's, that was from funny stuff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, man. You know, something so, it's so cut and dry. It's so obvious, like the three words and what they want you to do. And, I mean, it's it's – one, two, three, if you can't beat it, you know, there wasn't, you know, tied into any other ideology back in the day and all that stuff. No, it was just three words on the rock and there you go. It shows them what they are, but Precisely. yeah, I really appreciate it. Now, thanks for answering the questions. I really, I'll definitely be taking that, taking my toolkit uh, when I encounter somebody and spreading my well-being. Beautiful brother. Please call in more often. Yeah, I try. I, I work like sometimes later, like, 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 um, shift where it's like three shifts you know and it changes every once in a while so it's not always consistent but i definitely take advantage of it when i'm actually not at work at you know right now nine o'clock or whatever it is mm. all right brother well thank you so much god bless you promethean hail all right yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Hails, man yeah all right bye-bye that is magnificent ladies and gentlemen let me quickly jump over to cash app and we have as i let me grab the you know what? It is getting warm in here. It's getting hot in here, but I'm not going to take off all my clothes. As this, I was told about this, this cuck who listens to this music. And it looks like Mr. V is with us. And uh, let me get through these really quick and we'll have Mr. V. Damn, we're running out of time for Mr. V. Uh, Art Acrobats, $2.14 over on Cash Up. Thank you so much, good brother. He writes, great news coming soon to the white positive sphere. Isn't that interesting, folks? Thank you so much, good brother, for that financial gift and all the hard work that you're doing. The great white student transmission is with us and he financially gifted $10. Thank you, dear brother. And he says, for uh, folk tithe. Well, thank you so much, white student transmission. And we also have, uh, we have uh, James, financially gifting $4.16, and he says, stay awesome. 
exclamation point. God bless you, brother. Thank you so much for that. Stay awesome indeed. And uh, we will refresh that. Uh, looks like, let me jump over to Entropy, and we have Pierce Taylor, financially gifting $5. Thank you so much, dear brother, a great champion. Uh, and uh, thank you for always being with us. Ursa Major, God bless you. $10 financial gift. You are way too lenient on people like the Querto typist. <laughs> I don't know if I was very lean. I was, I, I guess I could have been worse, but maybe we'll do more of those if you all would like to see me ridicule these lovely people. But $10 Ursa Major, thank you so very much. The great Heidi Van Buskirk, financially gifting $10. Her and Raymond, wonderful people. He, she writes here, in the name of Querto, Cuervo, it was in, what it was, or was it Querti? Uh, I think that was French. And sorry, my Spanish is really bad. Many hails, chat. Well, thank you so much. $10 financial gift from Heidi. And thoroughly confusing me there as my vision goes a little blurry, or this monitor does. Promethean promulgation back again, folks. $20 financial gift. And right here, can everybody send me examples of white erasure by way of misattribution, either on Twitter? or by finding me in the White Wellbeing Telegram group, I'm working on a, a systematic way of handling it. This is Promethean Promulgation, folks. $20 financial gift, he says. Can everybody send me examples of white erasure by way of misattribution, either on Twitter or by finding me in the White Wellbeing Telegram group? I'm working on a systematic way of handling it. God bless you, Promethean Promulgation, and thank you for that. It looks like we have our the uh, Zach who was in first place. So, Mr. V, we might have to we might have to have you for next week because we're down to eight and a half minutes. But we'll see how quickly Zach can be. Zach, here comes the call right now. How are you doing, Mr. Jason Cott? Hey, Zach, how you doing? Doing great, man. Doing great. Doing great. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I'm always an advocate for you revitalizing Western kind. And I actually saw your live stream yesterday with Jerry George. I'm a big, big follower of his content. I think what you guys are doing are amazing. So um, thank you. Just, just wanted to you know, share this experience. I actually meant to tell you when I first called into the show, but again, sometimes, you know, when your mind is all over the place with so much stuff that's going on in your life, you just not necessarily forget, but you yeah. know, you just lose topic, right? So sure. yeah. basically I used to play, I know this, I know this really, really successful lawyer, really successful guy went to one of the best universities in the world. I mean, of course I can't be too, like I can't describe too much details about him to protect his identity, of course, but you know, very successful guy. And of course he's liberal, you know, mm -hmm. anti-white by your definition. Mm -hmm. So after, I think a couple of days after George Floyd's death and, and I'm definitely gonna get into the, um, video that you posted about the trial in a couple of minutes, but my point is back to my point. So we were talking about George Floyd's, you know, death and how he feels like, you know, he was basically saying if he, he knows that that situation wouldn't happen to him because he's white no. and actually took offense to that number one, because, you know, I'm a 23 year old, Jamaican black man. So you're basically saying that, you know, my life's in danger every time I step outside and every time, you know, people, other people see me, they, 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 they pity me with disgust. That's number one. And number two, mm -hmm. he's making it seem like that people that look like yourself, white people like that type, those situations aren't able to transpire. So a situation that I actually had to bring up to him was, the one with Tony Temple, I'm sure you're familiar with that. That happened in 2016. It was similar to what happened with George Floyd last year in 2020. And 
a white officer, not even a black officer, for those who want to play the semantics or even use the race card, but actually a white officer, you know, held Tony Tempest's hand against his neck on the floor, you know, had him begging for mercy, you know, had him begging for oxygen. In fact, I think it was even longer. And for anyone who thinks that I'm lying, you can even look it up on YouTube right now, Tony Tempest death, and watch the officer who were killed by the quote unquote his quote unquote white brother, you know, he, you know, made him look so, you know, he, he just, he, he, he took all of this, he, he, he stripped his humanity away from him. And what I was trying to explain to the lawyer is, listen, Matt, you can't keep on teaching these little white kids that, you know, like you, you, you can't keep on feeding them false rhetoric that their ancestors are the devil and, you know, every time they go outside, you know, like people like myself, lives are in danger. Like that situation could have happened to anybody, whether you were black, whether you were white, whether you were Asian, and that stuff actually happens to white people. Not necessarily all of the time, but I mean, there's plenty of situations that I'm not even making this up towards my own bias, but there's statistical facts that you can look up on the internet, you know, from credible sources, from whites, you know, dealing with police brutality as well. It just isn't, you know, it, the, the media just doesn't, you know, it's not on the news as much as like other races because again, everything has to be connected to race. Everything has yeah. to be a, a a race war. And it's just, we just got to a, a huge debate about that. And I just didn't like how he, he, he basically looked at me and said, like, yo, you're, you're a victim and excuse, and excuse the, the, the bonics. I don't even like using that word. But it's just, it, it was just, it was disgusting. Yeah. Oh, God, it, thank you so much, too, uh, for sharing that with us. And what a spectacle this is. I think every white person has witnessed it, it, in the course of their lives at some point a conversation between a, a radical anti-white white person and a non-white person who wasn't anti-white. Now, they, they, in most cases, they weren't going to be white positive, uh, white people like yourself, and we deeply appreciate that, uh, that you are white positive with us and want to put an end to this anti-whiteism. But you, you, we witnessed the white, the anti-white person trying to force this anti-white narrative onto the non-white person who is just like, well, get away from me. I'm just trying to live my life. I'm just trying to, I've got white friends and they, they suffer uh, as well. Let me tell you, brother uh, Zach, we are running out of uh, time. So you have a second point, I believe, but next week we'll have you uh, back again on the phone next week for your second point. And uh, so thank you so much for calling in. You are, I wrote your name down, you and Mr. V uh, at the beginning of the calls next week. So look for the final hour, the eight to nine hour Eastern Central Time as the phone call hour from now on folks. I'm angling at, for, for that angle or, or for that outcome. So thank you so much for calling in Zach and for being who you are and serving white well-being with us saying, let's put an end to this for that debate you had with that guy. And we'll talk with you next week, okay? Thank you so much, sir. It's always an honor talking to you. It's an honor speaking with you, Zach. Bye-bye now. Thank you. That is, that is absolutely fantastic. We are down. I wish we could have, I uh, wish we had enough time to have uh, Zach on for the rest of his point. And I wish I had time to have Mr. Now, Mr. V next week, folks, uh, we're going to have Mr. V on and he's going to be talking about Gad Sad's book and asking all of us, so get, get ready. If you write some ideas down over the course of the week for Mr. V, how he can present this information that his, his book review, if you will, of Gad Sad, uh, he's come to, he's gonna share the facts, nothing but the facts, ma'am, as they used to say on that old TV show. He's gonna be sharing that and uh, he's, he's going to, he's looking to us to crowdsource what's gonna be the most effective way because Gad Sad, his people are Really, boy, they're pushing him. He's making, he is number one. He's been number one on Amazon forever now, as we just passed under 60 seconds of remaining in the gathering today. He's been number one for month after month after month after month. And you can just look up what kind of money that is. Uh, in the end, he's doing very well. Most of those dollars are going to be from white people. Uh, and he's going to be spending them where? Uh, on his enrichment, on his pleasure. Uh, you know where I would be spending those dollars uh, if they were coming into my bank account rather than his. We need to do all that we can to make sure that 
the public doesn't end up thinking that he's the one that originated this. And then what I put together in going free uh, a decade and a half earlier uh, was was some sort of shoddy uh, anti-white slur version of what he created. So get your get those gears functioning and thinking about what's going to be the best way to share Mr. V's and you know how smart Mr. V is. So whatever he's putting together is going to be good. So how we're going to be able to get that to the masses in a way that is most effective. That's going to be next week. Zach's second point is going to be next week. And, and to Zach's first point, when I was a minor, as we wrap up here about how, well, the white police, they always, if it was a white guy, then it's always, it's, it's such hogwash. It is such nonsense. Every white person knows throughout the entire history of our people, we have been very brutal to what we believed were ne'er-do-wells, were criminals, were immoral, unethical people. Uh, and they would be punished the way everyone was punished uh, when law and order reigned. Uh, and I, when I was a minor, uh, I've told the story before, we'll close on this note, uh, and big round of applause, another round of applause for first last uh, $1,000 financial gift as we are wrapping up in this absolutely glorious uh, going free. I got out on a dirt bike and I was uh, driving on the dirt bike. It was not street legal on the road uh, to go and uh, tell my mother that her car was leaking uh, coolant because I didn't, it was the middle of summer. I didn't want the car to overheat. I had to, had to drive quite a little bit away. I was good, ride quite a little bit. I was good on a motorcycle. So there was no danger to me. There was, it was not street legal. That's true. Uh, but there was no danger to me. There was no danger to the public. And uh, as I was going down the road, about 35 miles, 35 mile, mile an hour road, a police car s driving in the oncoming traffic lane slid sideways, drove up and then turned sideways and slid sideways in front of me. I had to slam on the road, which could have killed me if I didn't know how to stop, you know, arrest the forward momentum of the motorcycle quickly without wrecking. And there were knobbies on it on pavement. So guys who ride motorcycles will know that that was not an easy thing to do, especially as a minor maybe. But I was able to arrest the momentum before hitting the police car. The motorcycle stalled. The police officer jumped out of his car with his gun out, pointing it straight at my face on the roof of his vehicle and told me to freeze or he was going to kill me, MF -er, or something like this. And I was like, what are you talking about? You know, I, I put my hands up in the air and he's, he's screaming, get off the motorcycle. So I, I got off the motorcycle as, uh, without using my hands, which wasn't an easy thing because it was a, a YT 250. And he, he's like, over to the car. So I walked over to the car. He's like, hands on the car. I put my hands on the car. He was behind me. At that point, he holstered his gun. And then he began beating the shit out of me, slamming my face into the police car. My face, my hands were going up and down. And, and he was hammering me. He may have punched me. I don't know in my rib cage because I, all I could really feel was the hood, my face being slammed into the hood. And the only reason it stopped was because Nate people were watching him beat me and they started screaming, why are you beating the shit out of that? Or I'm sorry, why are you beating the crap out of that kid? Uh, and I was a kid. I was not on drugs. I was not wanted for committing a crime. I was not a shoplifting. I was, did not have a record. I did on and on and on and on. They treat us people, Police officers are human beings. Some are going to be great. Some are going to be scum of the earth. That's the reality. We live inside the anti-white narrative, folks. But we here in Going Free are having great victories. We're having great victories like we had today. And we're going to have a lot more to come. Be a part of history. Be a part of what we're doing. And you'll make a name for yourself in the pages of those stories that will be read to those little white boys and little white girls to come. I love every single one of you. Let's go free.